Happy Friday night, everyone, and welcome to Game Face, episode 185. We are the most informative gaming podcast on the planet. I truly believe that. By far. By far. <laughs> I also believe we're the only podcast that actually shows you the games. My old boss at uh, Game Trailers had a saying, they're called video games, not text games. That's mm -hmm. why we show the games. So anyway. And even if it was a text game, we would still show them. Yeah, <laughs> we would show the text. We talk about Zork, you're going to see <laughs> <I> some text. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's a long weekend for people in the U.S. It's Columbus Day on Monday, I think it is. Yeah, I don't, that guy. yeah, I don't really get to observe any of that stuff anyway, so it doesn't matter. My wife is really excited about it. But anyway, for most people in America, it is a four-day weekend or a three-day weekend. Uh, and uh, four-day of only. That would be nice. <laughs> Not for us, if it was. But thanks for joining us to kick off your uh, long holiday weekend. I know the way it works at a lot of jobs is like you'll get like one year you get MLK Day, and then the next year you get Columbus Day. So. That's fucked up. It is. Yeah, it really is. That's the way it was at Viacom anyway. But uh, hopefully you guys all have Monday off. I don't think we ever got Columbus Day off at G4. We would alternate at Viacom. One year yeah, we, we get never, MLK. We never alternated. We would. We always got MLK Day off, and I don't think we ever. As you should. Yeah. I, I would rather have Martin Luther Absolutely. King Day off. Absolutely. Me but too. But I've never, I don't think we ever had Columbus Day. We always thought we did, but then we're like, no, you don't. No, oh. you got to come in. <laughs> So anyway, thanks for joining us on your Friday evening. Hopefully you guys are uh, cracking a couple soda pops and kicking the feet up after a long week of work. Uh, before we get into the show, and we have a gigantic show tonight, and I have a heart out at 8 o'clock. So I have to go to a birthday party in the Valley tonight, so I have to finish exactly at three hours. So if, the show, if it feels like we're cutting topics a little shorter than normal, it's because we have a ton of them and because I have to get out of here right at the three-hour mark. So before we get going... Uh, a couple things. First of all, thanks to everybody who's watching the, or listening to the show on Google Play. There's a lot of you. And I know that there's a lot of you because our bandwidth bill skyrocketed, yeah. <laughs> literally, like almost doubled. So there are a lot of you folks listening to the show on Google Play. Thank Don't you. Don't neglect the Android crowd. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad we finally got it up there. Um, we are making some adjustments to the quality of our audio because we were... Like, we were going way overboard with the quality of the audio for our podcasts. And now that we have great mics, we don't really need to do that anymore. So we are going to dial back the quality a little bit because mm. literally our bandwidth bill doubled front over the last month since we went up there. But all you folks who are listening to us on your Android no phones. No more Red Book audio for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the level that it was kind of at yeah. before. So uh, so everyone who's who has found us on uh, Google Play, welcome to Game Face. Uh, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash sifted. Uh, if you enjoy the show, kick us a couple bucks a month. Uh, we pretty much dump every penny we make back into making the shows better. Uh, so you know if you uh, invest in us, you're going to get results and the content is going to improve. And thank uh, you, for someone, for calling out Soda Pops in yeah. the chat. <laughs> Yeah, they call it pop. Where I grew up, they called soda pop. Yeah, I know. And now I call it soda. Good. Because it's called soda everywhere else. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one more thing. For those of you guys who stick around all the way to the end of the show, we're going to be giving away a game during the Q&A at the end of the show. So if you hang out till the end, you have a chance of getting a free game. And we are going to do a quiz again for the game. I actually have a question prepared this time. And I think people will be able to get it pretty easily. But anyway, that'll happen during the Q&A at the end of the show. But we have a lot to get to, so let's just jump straight to it. We're going to kick things off talking about a PlayStation 4 exclusive. This mm -hmm. is a game that should be right in my wheelhouse. I have not touched it, though, because hmm. I've been playing so much other stuff. But you have, Matt. It's Concrete Genie. Would you call this game an indie game? Well, no, because it's published by Sony. Right. Um, but it could have been one. It looks like if it weren't published by Sony, it probably would be considered an indie yeah, game. Yeah, although, I mean, the, there's a level of polish on this thing that, like, I don't think you'd get from your standard indie game. Um, I mean, look at that. That's not... There, there's some money behind oh, this yeah, one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Question. Not, that indie, not that indie games can't have money behind them, but, like, it's it's got uh, it's got a Sony sheen to it. Let's put it that way. It's polished. Yeah. Um, what is the, what's up with the game? I know he's like a graffiti writer. No, he's well, or he's, he's not. He's just got a sketchbook at the beginning. He's, he's an artist kid, and uh, he is mercilessly. He's, he's he's like both his parents work, so he's on his own for dinner, and uh, uh, he goes to hang out at this place, uh, this city or or like district in the city or whatever that he uh, used to it used to be sort of like a, a, a hangout, like a, a family-friendly fun place, like a, like a Coney Island sort of place almost. Like It's like the docks of the city, and it was like a, 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 f a fun sort of be like boardwalk kind of place. And now it's fallen into disrepair, and it's all dark and creepy and 
run down and there's like magic dark vines growing up around it that like you know, they are emblematic of the darkness and stuff and they t- his parents tell him not to go there but he goes there anyway and um there's this group of bullies there that are very very uh, diverse uh, of all genders and um and and ethnicities uh, all hanging out together and they just mercilessly bully this kid uh, they take a sketchbook and rip it up and destroy Boy. it, um, except for the last uh, sketch in it, which is this like little blue monster named he names Luna, and uh, he try he like is only left with the empty sketchbook, uh, but then the sketchbook is magic, turns into magic, and Luna comes to life. After they they lock him in this tram that sends him to the lighthouse, and in the lighthouse, Luna comes to life and sh- and gives him like this magic paintbrush, which you can see him holding there. And it's not um, in his imagination. Or uh, is that like a, it doesn't seem a to question be. that you have other, while you play? The other the other kids can't see any of this. It okay. doesn't look like. But okay. he but he he is gathering. So like Luna like gives him this magic paintbrush, and he is like revitalizing each area by turning the electric you can see the electric lights sort of christmas lights up there yep. you have to turn all those on in each district by okay. painting the wall they're on and uh sometimes you need help from the genie so so luna is sort of the lead genie and she ha- she can only be in like your masterpiece paintings but when you're in the air various areas you can create new genies which you can see the little monster painted on the ground there yeah if you go up to there you'll hit the square button and you'll like you can create a genie and like you've got all these different body types you collect in the different pages you find over the course of the game and you like swipe them from like bottom up and the face will be on the bottom swipe them top down and the face will be on the top swipe left to right and it'll be a four-legged version of the genie and then you can add like ears and horns and tails and wings and like weird little tentacles and like whatever you want and then you hit create and it just animates it it just like takes whatever you made and makes it into an animated creature and that's one of your genies and they all have a different uh element so there's like there's fire ones and electric ones and wind ones and like they you use the different uh elements to solve different puzzles and uh, the, so the basic way it works is a little, um, it's a little uh, Okami-ish. Okay. Like, like, say, I, I was going to com- ask. I compare it to like Okami or Jet Set Radio in the sense What that, is like, it more like, though? That's what I was going to ask. Is it more like Jet Set or is it more like Okami? It's more like Okami. Okay. Um, there's, less, there's some platforming, but not as much. Um, and it's more about filling things in rather than doing specific art. Okay. Um, and like there's, you'll have things where like you have to get past like a tarp that needs to be burned by one of your fire genies, but uh, to get them there, they're afraid of the darkness stuff. So uh, to get rid of the darkness stuff um, for the dark you get on the walls, you have to use what's called super paint. And the way you get super paint is you make the genies happy. So if the genie, you, you, the genies will ask you to paint specific things for them, and if you do that, they'll get happy and they'll fill your super paint meter. Uh, and of course, to be able to paint those individual things, you have to find the pages floating around the area that have those designs on them. So that's sort of the the, the scavenger hunt versus the puzzle solving balance. And uh, you basically do that in each area. And uh, once you light everything up, you kind of move on to the next section. And at the end of each group of sections uh, in the town, there's a masterpiece where you have to like go up and paint all these things. That the it's genies... like a boss fight, basically. Sort of, but it's, there's no fight. It's just the <laughs> right. genies tell you to paint it's everything. This game's and, version of a boss fight. And you make fight. it, and then Luna comes in and, and gives you your next power. You need to get to the next area. Uh, I think I'm almost done. I think I'm in the last area. Like okay. It's not very long. It's like three or four areas. Oh. Um, like it's, it's like a three-hour game wow maybe. this game's been in development for a while um there might be more to it but like right now looking at the map i feel like i'm getting there um and then there's like a whole subplot with the with the bullies because they, they still are around yeah what's town. the what's the point of the game like what are you trying to accomplish you're trying to basically every time when you when you light the lights up and like re- reinvigorate the areas you kind of restore the, the that part of that town to its former you know non-dark disgusting grimy glory so the idea is to kind of save this forgotten part of the city from oblivion and so i kind of bring it back to this like you know place you remember it being as, as a child how does that relate to him being bullied though um well the the bull, the subplot with the bullies is they're still around like when you're trying to get and they'll beat you up and kill you basically if you get caught by them so there's a little bit of stealth where you have to like you they're, they're around like a page or a thing you need to deal with and you i like, can yell at them and they'll come try to get you and you run around the other side and paint the thing real quick and there you're done um, but there's periodic periodically you'll encounter them like between things in, in cut scenes and if if one of one of them will grab your paintbrush while you're still holding it and you'll get a flashback to their their all their universally horrible childhoods which explain why they're terrible kids <laughs> now and like afterwards they're like shaken and don't know so so presumably like he's coming to understand why they are the way they are ah, and so it's kind of acceptance yeah I and guess. they're sort of being forced to like you know, confront the reason they act out, and like, you know, it, it's it's about like acceptance and 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 that kind. Of, there's there's some there's some very strong themes of like, 
you know, why we do what we do and why horrible people are the way they are. And, you know, Ash isn't, you know, at least Ash takes a while. Ash is the name of the boy. It takes a while to, like, you know, think nicely about them. But after a while, starts to realize that they've all had terrible lives and he's actually pretty lucky because he still has a, a family that's not around much but still is together and loves him. Wow, it's a um, game with a real message. It is. It has. It has. <laughs> it has some thought in it, definitely. Uh, and the the genies are adorable. They're they kind of got a kinda where the wild things are sort of sort of look to. I them. love the art in this game. Um, the art's re- very very nice. Uh, I love the hair. Like you can't really see it because you can only really see it in the close up cutscenes. But Ash's hair is one of the coolest takes on hair I've ever seen in a game. Like, wow. It, I mean, it kind of looks like doll's hair, kind of, but it looks real. It looks like you could. Grab scrunch it. it like it looks really real like if you put that hair on like a realistic character model like i think i'd buy it as as like a real hair hair texture it, it's very well done and then like the rest of it like the the, the facial animation is done almost like 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 almost stop motion style oh. it's, it's, it's like very low frame rate kind of like like that but it's, it's, it's very, a very stylized indie. look yeah <laughs> Um, but I really enjoy it. It's, it's not difficult. It's not very hard to figure out. Like, the puzzles are very rudimentary. I've just sort of breezed through the whole thing, but it's an extremely pleasant experience. I mean, it, it sounds to me like it's made for, like, tweens. Kids who might, like, I mean, the age bit, of the yeah. character, basically. So if you make it too complicated, maybe the message gets lost in the A little the bit. Conflict. I mean, it's also made just for anybody that remembers something that isn't good anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it, <laughs> it's, it's, it, there's an element of that. Here you see the, uh, that, that's the wall you have to use super paint to get rid of. So that's, oh, what, okay. that's what he's doing here. Um, and can, you can use any kind of paint, any design, whatever you want on each wall. Uh, as long as you paint the wall, the lights will light up. So you can do whatever you want. You can pay, you, you can make whatever designs, paint whatever things you want. There you so see. There you, can. there you see the monster is asking for butterflies. So you paint the butterflies, oh, and okay. then I it'll see. be happy, and it'll fill your super super paint bar up again. So there there are some opportunities to be artistic in this game. Oh yeah, you can do whatever you want pretty much at all times. Like it's there's as long, you, you can only work with the stuff that's in your inventory you picked up. But like, and then there's a free paint mode where you can just go back in and do whatever you want all over the city. Um, which is, you know, fine. It's yeah. fun. Um, and then if you get the deluxe version, which I did not, you apparently get a whole other set of pond-themed things you can paint. Uh, which DLC I, will keep on coming for this one, Yeah, my um, guess. I mean, you could do way more with it, yeah. Um, there you see he's doing the, he did the sideways monster, so that monster will have four legs, even though it's the same design. Oh, uh, okay. So there's a lot of... So you can paint the same monster in different orientations, and yeah. it changes how they... Move. Yeah, it's it's a little spore like in that. Yeah, yeah, like the, it sounds the, like you know, it's and then like once you look, once you start it there, it'll just animate it and it'll work. It's it's very well done. How much was this game? Or is this game thirty? Thirty bucks. It's thirty bucks, and then ten the, bucks an hour. I think it was forty bucks for uh, the deluxe version. Okay, I didn't get that one. Do you feel like it was worth the cash you spent? Mm, it's close. Yeah, um, three hours is tough. For it, thirty it, bucks. I, I mean, I might be wrong. It might be longer than I think. There might be an like extended thing. Because, but there, but the, but he's already talking about. It. I was like, oh, I only got one more place to go. Uh, but then I went into the sewers, so maybe he has to take the sewers to get to like the final area. Like, and uh, or Vincent's saying there's a change in the game place down near the end. So I guess I'm not at that yet. Okay. But I mean, it, it feels pretty short. His review sounded like it was more like six hours. He says, all right. That's good. So maybe you're not. You're only halfway there. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not as far as I think. But uh, six hours. That's okay. That's Thirty fine. bucks. That I can. Much, I can yeah. take that. Especially with this like level of polish and quality on it. Like, Is there any incentive to replay it? I'm um, just to like paint other stuff. I guess. I mean, you know, this. The, I, I haven't seen anything. I don't know if there's like a new game plus thing where you can use all the. You can use all your stuff like from, from the, the beginning. beginning or whatever. Um, I mean, I'd play it again just to sort of like romp through it. Like you know, it's it's a very pleasant game. Like, that's all I can say. It's like, it's, like, it's like I have not been irritated or frustrated or angry or anything through the whole thing. I've just been like, oh, it's nice. Enjoying it. Consuming good entertainment. Yeah. So PlayStation 4 only. Yeah. And it does have a PSVR uh, element, but I haven't. Do you know what it is? Uh, no. Okay. I think it might just be the paint mode. I don't know. But, like, I didn't. That would make I, sense. I didn't rehook the the whole headset yeah, thing. I don't blame like, you. Because I have the also, I mean, mainly because I have the old uh, PSVR, the first one, so like HDR doesn't work through it. Right. And so if I want HDR, I have to re- unhook and rehook yeah. everything. Like if I if I didn't have to do that, I'd probably leave the PSVR plugged in all the time. It'd be a lot easier. But like I don't, and I didn't want to buy another one just to do that. So yeah. I'm like I rarely try out VR stuff unless I have to. Maybe uh, if that uh, what's that what's that RPG that's getting such good ratings on the on the Oculus. 
I don't know. It's like uh, some like Norwegian Norse thing, something. Quest. Oh, I don't know. I'm not aware of it. Begins with an A. Um, I can't remember. Asgard Quest. Asgard's Wrath or Asgard's uh, yeah, that's, Quest. That's, or that's it. Asgard's yeah, Wrath. That's, I, I play that, but I don't have an Oculus. So. Right. <laughs> yep. That's what you get for buying the best VR HMD. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I think I can play Oculus stuff like through a like a, I have a There's like a trash thing. Yeah. But that would require me to drag the Vive out of the closet. Mm. That's not happening. Not right now, no. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's Concrete Genie, PlayStation 4 only, 30 bucks. Matt gives it the thumbs up. Recommend yeah, it for that price. Very, very nice. Like, not probably not on my game of the year shortlist, but, like, like just a thoroughly pleasant game. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to a Switch exclusive. This is, like, the exclusive episode of Game Face. Uh, something happened this week that never happens. Nintendo sent us preview code. What? <laughs> what? It never does it. it but actually, of... <laughs> of Mario and Sonic at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Have you ever played one of these games? No. I hadn't either because I just always looked at them like, oh, they, they look so bad. And yeah. they just look like crap. I mean, I my eye did slightly wander to this one because of the, uh, the 2D stuff. Yeah. But that's about it. Yeah. Well, I have been pleasantly surprised by this game. Hmm. Um, this actually is the review build. They just sent it really early because I guess it's already gold and... <laughs> I'm just amazed. I, I mean, even as a Sega fan, like that group shot of Mario's crew is like, oh, look at all that. And a group of shot of Sonic's crew is like, Sonic, Tails, Eggman, Knuckles, and a bunch of rejects. Yeah, like, I don't. Like, what? Half of the characters, I don't even know who they were. Like, I, can't I even know remember. most of them are, but they're all. I mean, they're not called Sonic and his shitty friends for nothing. <laughs> like, it's just. Uh, so anyway. As you probably figured out by now, this is a video game that they're releasing for the Tokyo 2020 uh, Olympic Games. And uh, <laughs> did you also know that this, the official stats on Peach is that she's six one? No, she's very tall. I, I was not aware of that. She's like a supermodel then, apparently. Yeah. Which I guess is to make it so that when Mario's tiny, he's like a normal human size. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't can't. know what's going on. You may there. be right. They may be like scaling it or something like that. Like, what do they say Mario's height is? I don't know if they've ever said Mario's height. Yeah, I don't know if they have. Like, uh, if she's 6'1", I, I'm guessing he's something like 5'8". Yeah. Even after all these years, though, still seeing Sonic and Mario together, even despite that they've It is done, pretty bizarre. It's still weird. Like, it's still weird to me to see them together in one game. Uh, I would say that this game leans far heavier in the Nintendo direction than the Sega direction. Well, that's not... A bad thing, really. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It, it was it was the right move. I mean, obviously, Nintendo's roster of characters just basically dwarfs Sonic's roster of uh, of folks. So, and they had to fill it out, and they fill it out. They did. This game is huge, huge. Like not just as far as like the characters that you can select, and you unlock more of those as you play. But when you boot it up, there's already like twenty or whatever that you can select from. But it's the number of events. There are literally like 40. Here, you can see it right here. Mm. You can see all the, and this is just the 3D events. So if you look to the right there, it says Tokyo 1964. Mm. That's where you go to get to all the 2D events. <laughs> and there aren't as many 2D events. There's probably half as many 2D as there because are there 3D. Because there weren't as many sports in 64. That's absolutely right, actually. I mean, that's true. One disappointment I will say is I believe breakdancing is in the Olympics. In 2020, uh, I think it's in, in. It's not official, but it's like in there. You know that test. Uh, okay, kind of like how esports was last time. Yes. So, well, break dancing is not in the game, and to me, that would be a really cool thing to have. <laughs> Seriously, like I think it would be awesome if, oh, like, yeah. if you could see like the Mario and Sonic well, characters. Was probably the, the animators were probably like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. You of can work. either have a roster this big, or you can have break dancing. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you though, they really haven't cut corners on this game. Uh, it, it's pretty shocking the amount of work that they've put into it. Uh, there These is, things sell like crazy. So, do they? So, yeah, I they sell even very well. That. They sell very well. There is a story mode, and that's what you're seeing right now. And you like the 8-bit versions of the Sonic characters like in the stands back there. That's yeah, yeah. Funny. Um, so there is a story mode in this game. And the, as the story goes, Eggman has created a little miniature handheld gaming machine. And when Mario... The madman. Right. And, <laughs> and when Mario plays it, he gets sucked into an mm. alternate universe, a 2D universe. And to get back to the real world... They have to win gold medals at the 1964 Olympics. <laughs> sure. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's the original a, plot of Looper, I believe. Pretty much, yeah. it's absurd. Uh, as you can see, there's like this big map of Tokyo, and you just kind of run around this map uh, to get to uh, the different locations. Um, what the hell? You're streaming us live. Yeah, my, suddenly my stream came. <laughs> I up. just woke up. 
Uh, but you, so you use this overworld map to go to the different events, and it's pretty cool because it's obviously it's not a thousand percent accurate with Tokyo. It's not even like five percent accurate with Tokyo. In eight years, we get them in LA, right? But if you've been to Japan, it's pretty cool to kind of waltz around the city and see the different venues that you'd seen in real life and, and stuff like that before. Um, like I said earlier, there are just a ton of events in this. I was shocked at how many events there are. And there's some niche ones, too. Like, there's, like, archery and, like, these weird, like... Like, their selection, to me, is mostly good. And how they handle most of the mini games is mostly good. It's better uh, than, like, the, the Olympic games that are just like, here's 5,000 track events. Yeah. I mean, it has that. It has, like, the 100... The 100 meters, the right. 400 meters. But you're not the, trying to convince me that all those are separate events. Right. You know, like yeah, I mean, they are just a small fraction of the total uh, events that are on offer. And what shocked me the most is, like, stuff like skateboarding. Like, they actually handle it, like, really well. I also realized while I was playing this that I have not played a skateboarding game in a really long time. Mm. It's pretty crazy to think about. Is that about. what the skateboarding is going to be there this in 2020? Like a, like a pool kind of setup? It'll have everything. It'll have mm. a street, pool, vert. It'll just be like like X Games, basically. They'll have like all the different disciplines there. Um, uh, surfing, like again, I haven't played a good surfing game in a really long time. The surfing in this is like really good, hmm. like really good. Like I was pretty blown away by just in general the amount of time and effort that they just put into each and every one of these mini games. Now there's there's some throwaways for sure. You know, there's like archery. It's like there are some events where you just jam one button, like any of the. Oddly enough, the track and field stuff is the least interesting stuff because it's generally mash a button to run as fast as you can, then hit a button when you get to a certain mark and hold it till the angle's right and release it. And that's how, like, the long jump works. It's how, like, the shot put works. It's how, like, the discus works. So there, there are some mechanics that get repeated, like, over and over and over again. But for the most part, I've been pretty impressed with this game. Not only do you get the story mode, and I've, I don't know, I've probably spent five hours with this total, something like that, and I'm nowhere near the end of the story mode. Story mode sucks, I'll be perfectly <laughs> honest. Like, all the cutscenes and the dialogue, it's like you just try to skip them as fast as you can so you can just get to the next event. Rock climbing. Yeah. I, like I said, like they, this is the worst event, actually. This is the worst of them all, because see how that arc, like, once you hit the button to jump, the arc starts going all squirrely, and you have to, like, release the button when it gets lined up with where you want to go. I never even finished get, making it up that tower. <laughs> I just gave up. I was like, I've had it. There's all these other events that I can participate in. Um, but the, the options are, are vast. There's the story mode. You can play every single event separately if you want to. Uh, you can play with any just about any control scheme. You can play with just one Joy-Con. You can play with two Joy-Cons. You can play with motion controls if you want to. I generally just used uh, the one Joy-Con controls, with, which is just buttons. Um, so there's a story mode. You can play anything you want, anytime you want. And then you can play pretty much everything online. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Here's the surfing. I was pleasantly surprised by this game. After I, I, they, they sent it to me. I'm like, oh, I'll get to that when I can. And like I just kind of set it up to download. Oh, the balloon's just hanging out of his crotch. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shooting fire up Sonic's balls really <laughs> oh did mario get the same treatment yes he did yeah. yes he did so i don't, I don't know about that one, one thing that's cool about this sur this the surfing game is that you wait for good waves hmm. you sit out there and you float you don't have to take every wave and once you see a wave that you think is big enough and you can get a good score from then you start paddling and catch that wave uh again like everything there's rugby in this and it's actually handled like really well like look this isn't like fifa level soccer or anything but it's like an arcade-style soccer game that's actually pretty fun to play. It, you'll see here it kind of has some elements of uh, Mario Strikers in it as well. Mm. So it comes out November 1st, um, which is odd, again, that they sent it so early. But it's definitely not going to be delayed. Yeah. Unlike, uh, Unlike Doom Eternal, Doom. <laughs> which just doomed my fantasy team. Thanks, Doom, for dooming me. I mean, I I I had a told I told you so on the other two. You you got delayed, but I would never recall. Never that. would have guessed that. Yeah, me that either. Is, that is very unexpected. I just have terrible luck. <laughs> That's just all there is to it. Use all your luck up finding your car again. Apparently, I did. I think that just zapped all my luck for like the next ten years or whatever. Which, so. like, if you really were lucky, you wouldn't have had it stolen in the first place. But, like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to take the good with the bad, Kyle, in life. <laughs> 
But uh, it comes out November 1st. It's a Switch exclusive. Um, I don't know if it's going to be bargain priced or not. Usually not. Yeah, my guess is it isn't. I would say this too. I mean, like, if this is the size you say it is, it seems like it could get away with the... It's bigger than Link's Awakening, at least. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a big game. Like, I always thought that these were, like, games that you'd play for, like, a couple hours and be like, ah, oh, that was kind of fun and never go back to them. But, I mean, I think the originals were, but, like, they seem... they You know, they... They're, they're popular and successful enough that uh, it seems like they've really started to put more and more behind them. Yeah, you can also see that my future in equestrian events yeah, is that's, not... Not uh, so much. <laughs> I should probably find a different vocation. Uh, Vincent is saying that right now there's a demo on the Japanese eShop uh, that has 10 different events. So if you guys want to try it out before it comes out November 1st, you can. Uh, for those of you who don't know, setting up a Japanese account on Switch is really, really easy. Uh, so if you ever see on Sifted that there's a demo that's been released in Japan for Switch, it will literally take you like five minutes to set up a Japanese account. Hmm. And you can go to their eShop and you can download whatever you want. I highly recommend it because, honestly, there are a ton of demos that the Jap- Japanese eShop gets that we never get. So definitely worth doing. So if you want to check this out for yourself, uh, you can do that on the Japanese eShop. Again, it comes out November 1st. And honestly, it's really the last big Nintendo game until, like, Pokemon. Yeah. As far as first party games are concerned. So something worth investigating. Which is only like a week later. But right. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Wait. I thought uh, Pokemon came out in December. My Pokemon's no? like November, oh, is it November 14th or something like that. Oh, okay. I thought Nintendo was sticking to its usual, hey, we have this gigantic game and we're going to release it in December. No, I think it's it's November last I checked. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I guess you only have a couple weeks with this before you would move on. But um, I was, again, pleasantly surprised by it. It's, I've never played one of these before. And may, maybe the other ones are pretty good, too. And I just wrote them off and never tried them. I don't know. But this one's pretty good. I had fun with it. Maybe, maybe also good for, like a, like, a Christmas with the family sort of thing. Oh, yeah. The multiplayer in this is great. I mean... It's basically a mini game compilation, is yeah. what it is. It's a party game. Yeah, it's it's Mario Party without the s- without sadism. the board. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, you have a corny story mode that you have to play through. I don't know what's the lesser of those two evils, but well, I'm pretty sure this is going to ruin fewer controllers. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, although there are some where you have to rotate the analog stick to gain momentum or to gain speed. I don't know speed. about tails beating women up in the boxing ring, but okay. <laughs> I had I, pick, I had to pick Daisy for that. I was like, she's going to go in and whoop his butt. So anyway, there you go. Mario and Sonic at the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. Let's move on. Going to talk next about Fortnite. Yeah, Luigi's Mansion's in there too. Huh? Is in where? The Between now and then. Oh, that's right. That's October though. Yeah. 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 There's like three days. That's true. Yeah. Nintendo's got a decent Q4, unlike yeah. everybody else. Yeah. The, the Q4 is pretty sparse otherwise. Yep. For sure. Okay, let's move on. We're going to talk next about Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite has had a tough week. We are? Yeah. Hmm. Did I delete that from your rundown? Well, no, Fortnite's further down on mine. (laughs) I don't know how that happened. Weird. That is weird. Pull up the lower third, Adam. Yeah, the lower third will decide this. (laughs) It will. I have no idea what that means. Oh, Mar- that must be Call of Duty. That's Call of Duty yeah. Mobile. What is going on? Is that the next? Is that the, the next one in line, Adam? Yeah, because then next one's PlayStation Now. I don't know how my rundown is the only wrong one. I don't know. <laughs> okay. It's that Satterfield luck. All right. Back in, back in, back in play. Okay. Well, I, okay. We're gonna talk about Call of Duty Mobile right now. Um, talking about pleasant surprises. This one has been a hugely pleasant surprise. I am shocked at how good Call of Duty Mobile is. Wow. Yeah. Didn't I didn't see that coming. I did not either. I uh it is great. <laughs> it's crazy. Um and look, they had to adapt a lot of stuff for mobile like the controls. Mm-hmm. Uh but I am shocked at how well you can control movement in this game. Um you use it's just like you have a virtual analog stick. So the left stick handles uh Moving forward, back, and then strafing left and right. And then the right fake analog stick controls your look. And I have, in like two minutes, I was able to move around the environment in this game like I would in any other Call of Duty. Now, the caveat is aiming. There's two different settings for aiming. None of them was not aiming. It's firing the gun. You can't really fire the gun manually. On the most basic shooting setting, it fires automatically. So once you get your reticle over an enemy, the gun just starts to fire. 
Um, and then there's a more advanced aiming that where you can burst fire, like an icon pops up on the screen and you can hold the icon and you can burst fire if you want to. But I've just been playing with the automatic fire and I am just dominating. I was playing some games before you got here. The last game I played, I finished 37 and five. Jeez. <laughs> I, every game I play in this, I go up two or three levels after the match. Like, I don't know if people just aren't able to handle the control. I, I just picked it up right away. Um, all the maps are from real Call of Duty games. They're, the visuals, they're they're dialed back a little bit. It is a mobile game, but they look pretty freaking great. Like, it runs at 1080p. This footage you're looking at right now from Jack Frags is, is in 1080p. When you get closer to stuff, you can see that they've made some sacrifices in textures. And, like, look at that rock there on the right. Like, mm-hmm. you can see that they've, they've cut back on the geometry a little bit. But who cares? Like, who pays attention to that stuff when you're playing a shooter anyway? Um... It is free to play. You can go download it on the App Store right now. It doesn't cost you a dime. It, it does have microtransactions. It has to if they want to make money. But they're not heavy-handed with it. And I'll say this. like The progression that I've seen playing this is really no different than a Call of Duty that I pay for. After every match, I unlock something. Either it's like a new grenade or a new gun or a new attachment. Uh, where they expect you to spend... And they do ask you to spend money pretty regularly. Like Every time you boot it up, there's yeah. like... Four, Please. Yeah, there's like four <laughs> screens that you have to like close mm. out before you can get to the game. But most of the stuff they're asking you to spend money on is cosmetics. It's like, hey, do you want your gun to be green? No. Or No. Or do you want this accessory or whatever? No, I don't want any of that. So I've been playing this for a couple days now, completely free, and I don't feel like I've missed out on anything. Now, one thing I would say is the content on offer right now is pretty minimal. There's only like three maps right now. Uh, the good news is is they chose maps that most people generally love, like Nuketown is one of the maps, and I think that's, on average, I think most people would say that's their favorite Call of Duty map of all time. It's certainly the one that, if people have an option to choose a map in a console Call of Duty, they always choose Nuketown, and then one, mm-hmm. once it's over, if they can pick it again, they pick Nuketown again. So uh, it's in there. Um, the mode on the right, or the the, sh- the cruise liner ship, I can't remember the name of that map, but it's in there. That, again, that's a really popular map from the franchise. So even though the content is kind of limited right now, uh, I think they chose well as far as what they're going to launch with. They're already having like their first special event where they have like a themed thing where if you play, you can get like free cosmetics or whatever. Uh, the loadout, like you can see right now, Jack Frags is using like a flamethrower. Uh, I have not seen that they've really cut back on the types of guns that you can use and you can unlock and have. Uh, It really is like a full-featured Call of Duty game where the gun shoots automatically. Hmm. Uh, That's the best way I could sum it up like very quickly. Um, I had very low expectations for this, but I I can't believe how good it is. Uh, as far as modes are concerned, there's no campaign, but hey, they don't have campaigns in some of the console Call of Duties anymore either. So, but there's no campaign, but all the multiplayer stuff is there. There's uh, Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Capture and Hold, Seek and Destroy, con- like all of it. Like the almost the entire multiplayer suite from what would be a, a console Call of Duty is included in this mobile release. And again, it's free. It costs absolutely nothing. I will say this, it drains your battery real fast, like real fast. If you play like three matches and then go back to your home screen, you can see noticeably that the power on your phone has dropped. Hmm. And I mean, that's pretty typical for mobile games, at least 3D ones that are kind of really putting your processor processor through its paces. But it was especially pronounced for this one. The audio is incredible. Like, it literally, it's like if you put on headphones while you play this, it's no different than playing a console Call of Duty. So really, really impressed with this. Uh, I know a lot of people may hate it because of the automatic gunfire, but after you play a couple matches, you get used to it, and you start to, like, account for it. Um, Mantling is, like, a separate button, so that's a little weird. I found myself just avoiding places where I need to mantle. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I see, like, oh, there's a window I could go in, I just run around the side of the building instead of trying to go through the window. Because, uh, there's, again, there's a button. The other thing, too, is the UI is pretty cluttered because there's so much stuff that they have to message on the screen. And they have to have buttons for, like, everything because you don't have a controller with, you know, four face buttons and a bunch of shoulder buttons. So the UI does get a little cluttered, and your thumbs do cover up part of the screen, which is always going to be a problem in any mobile game that you play. 
But honestly, I give this really high marks for a mobile shooter. It's the best mobile first-person shooter I've ever played. Hmm. That's not even hyperbole. Like, nothing's close, really. Uh, so it appears that finally, after Activision dabbled with, like, a, a stupid zombies minigame and... All, and like I think there was a Call of Duty like turret shooter for mobile. It finally has delivered as close to the real McCoy as I think it can on the platform. So even better than Red Faction on the Engage. <laughs> I mean, truth be told, there haven't been a lot of first-person shooters on mobile that are like this. Where they are is, hey, this is the console game, but you're playing it on mobile. They all try to account for the shortcomings of the mobile platform and the control scheme and things like that. And Activision was just like, you know what? I think we can do this. And it did it. It's really good. So if you're looking for a mobile game to play, look, you do need like to be on Wi-Fi. You can't really play this with your uh, data plan. Maybe in Europe you can. In the U.S. it's not really working. I had to have this connected to Wi-Fi to play it. I did have some lag issues. Like I had one point where like my, my just disappeared and appeared like in a different part of the map. I've had enemies that I'm shooting just disappear while I'm shooting them. Mm. So that part, they could probably do some more work on and get it ironed out and get it working a little bit better. But otherwise... S- sounds sounds more stable than Ghost Recon. Yeah. Well, we're going to get to that. <laughs> we Oh, are we ever going to get to and that? It, and it didn't, this didn't charge anything. Yeah. What yeah. is this? Is this Battle Royale? Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention. There's a Battle Royale mode. Wow. With 100 players. Hmm. Think about Remember when they were first talking about Blackout and they're like, oh, at 64, and they eventually like bumped it up? No, right out of the gate, 100 players for Mobile Battle Royale. It's crazy. It's crazy. I like, I don't. The reviews for this, most people have been like, it's good, but the scores have been like sixes or sevens. So I'm wondering if I've just somehow missed that there's this awesome first person shooter on mobile. And if I have, please let me know because I'd like to try it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I'm wondering how they're scoring it. Because to me, this is the best shooter for mobile ever. So I'm wondering how their score, if they're just ignoring the fact that it's the best shooter and they're like, it's still not a console shooter. Because if this were on consoles, absolutely, it would get like a six or a seven. But for the mobile platform, I don't know. Maybe some people just don't take platform into consideration when they evaluate games. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, I've been... I, I, don't know, I know nothing about mobile first-person shooters, so I don't know. Because there aren't any. <laughs> I really don't know of any. Um, yeah, I, mean, no- I mean, there's like... Uh, uh, PUBG. Oh, that's right. That's right. PUBG is on mobile. Maybe that is way better. I don't know. I did try that, though, and it seemed janky to me. Oh. So I don't know. This is the best one i played so far. Take that for what it's worth. I play a lot of shooters, so hopefully I have at least a little bit of trust in my opinion on the genre. But, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I've been playing it for a couple days. It's, like, the only mobile game I want to play. <laughs> I'm not a fan of mobile gaming in general. And this game does have some of those elements that turn me off to mobile gaming, uh, but not enough to make me not want to play it and not enjoy it. So, again, it's free. You can go download it for free. The microtransactions are handled very well. The messaging is a little heavy-handed. You're going to have to close out a bunch of screens every time you boot it up. But once you start playing, like, you won't even know that it's a free-to-play game. It's definitely not a freemium game. So there you go. Call of Duty Mobile. Good stuff, people. I was really, really impressed with it. Um, just the options, the modes, the controls that they managed to impart with a touch screen. That's just uh, pretty shocking to me. So, Matt, what's next? Because <laughs> you have the rundown. Uh, according to accurate. the graphics, PlayStation Now is next. <laughs> there we, it is right. That's good. All right, we're going to talk next about PlayStation Now. Uh, Sony is trying to fire back at Microsoft. At least that's what I think. Mm-hmm. I feel like Sony... Well, I think Sony feels which way the wind's blowing. So Yeah. So Sony just dropped drastically the price of PlayStation now. Um, it is now $10 a month. And I have, like, the information here as far as, like, what the cost used to be. Um, it used to be $90 a year. Now you can get a year's pass of PlayStation now for $60. Bucks. Mm-hmm. So that's way cheaper. Uh, you can get the monthly for $10 a month now. It used to be $20 a month. So, essentially, Sony has slashed the cost of PlayStation mm-hmm. Now in half. And that's why competition is good. It's exactly. We say this all the time. It's like you want the competing products to be good because it pushes the other people to raise their game. And that's exactly what Sony's done here. It's like, look, PlayStation Now is never going to succeed if it costs double what Xbox Game Pass costs. 
I mean, who in their right mind would do that? I mean, the other problem, too, is PlayStation Now, can you download the games? On yes. Play- you can now. Yeah. Okay. So it is on equal footing then, pretty much. Pretty much. So basically what the, the proposition is, do you want to spend 10 bucks to get Sony's first-party stuff, or do you want to spend 10 bucks to get Microsoft's first-party stuff? Because most of the third-party stuff, it rotates, it comes mm. in and out. But for the most part, it's all the same. Uh, to, to celebrate, though, kicking this off, Sony signed some pretty big games over the next few months. Um, God of War is coming to PlayStation Now. Grand Theft Auto V is coming to PlayStation Now. Uncharted 4 is coming to PlayStation Now. So Sony's kind of cracked open the vault a little bit. It also coincides with most of those games becoming uh, greatest hits, mm-hmm. $20 games. Over yeah, I the think last that's also weeks. why uh, Last of Us Remastered was the free game this month. Yep. Probably so. Yeah. So what do you think it's going to work? You think it'll work, Matt? I mean, I don't know. I don't know I mean, enough, they're, about, they're I don't know enough about the now. economics of, of how these things are working. Um, uh, is, I'm probably not going to subscribe to it. Like, it's just uh, I'm, I've already got Game Pass, and I barely use that. So, like, I don't need another subscription service I don't take advantage of. Um, but it depends, like, you know, what, what comes down the line. Uh, it also depends what they do with it on PlayStation 5. Like, that's more kind of what I'm looking for yeah. right now. Um, how they're going to leverage it moving forward. Um, but it's nice to see them, like, you know, taking the initiative on it. Like, it's better than just stagnating and refusing to acknowledge that anybody else is doing anything like they did with crossplay. Yeah. So long. I mean, you look, you also have Stadia on the cusp of releasing here. Yeah. So it's not just getting pressure from the Microsoft camp. It's also, you know, all the streaming services mm-hmm. that are going to come online that are finally going to compete with PlayStation now because Sony look, gobbled up the look two at all game those streaming Sony services. guitar picks. <laughs> Because in all honesty, Sony gobbled up both of the streaming services. Yeah. So it didn't really le- – it left everyone else to either develop their own or do something like Game Pass, which is what Microsoft ended up doing. So um, I don't know. I-, I tend to think that Sony's first-party stuff is a little more compelling than Microsoft's first-party stuff, from at least from this generation. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, the other reason is like I, I'm more on the Game Pass side is that I have the Xbox One X, which right. runs stuff better. It does. Multi-platform, yeah. so – I don't know. That's why. That's why I say like the real decision making will happen when the next systems come out because we'll see which one does what better and which one I'd rather kind of be my focus. You know, the, the system I play all the multi-platform stuff on, and like whichever one that is, will probably get my subscription money, like one way or the other. Because Microsoft also has X Cloud coming. Yeah, because I'm, I'm also waiting. Like, it remains to be seen if if Sony's going to give you like day and date access to big exclusive stuff the way Microsoft, you know, Microsoft gave me Gears 5 three days that early. That is a big advantage. Like, you know, yeah, it wasn't even, like, launch day. Yeah. It was early. Like, they gave me, like, the, the ultimate edition, not yeah. just, like, you know, random, you know. I spent two bucks. I'm going to play Gears 5 for free and The Outer Worlds for free. Yeah. That's crazy. It's good stuff. That's crazy. And like Microsoft Ubi- just lost, like, $120. And, like, Ubisoft does that, too. Like Ubisoft, when you subscribe to their equivalent thing, uh, that you get the deluxe version of the game, all the DLC, the whole thing. That's great. So if Sony follows suit with that, if I can pay like a sixty dollar a year fee and get all their AAA games, you know, day and date, that's pretty that's pretty attractive. At the same time, I am still enough of a collector that I might want to buy a physical copy of something like Last of Us Two right, or right. Yeah. or uh, Ghost of Tsushima just to keep my Sucker Punch collection complete, kind of thing. But uh, we'll see. Like, yeah, I think they're in the right going in the right direction. Oh, absolutely. And it was smart of Sony to do this before the PlayStation Five comes along. Yeah, like now that you've uh, now that they've um, let me, you know, you let me download it. Like you've got my attention. Although I will admit, when I came back from up north, I turned the PlayStation on, and then they automatically installed the PlayStation Now thing. Just delete. Yeah. Like, now you don't get to do. A little that. heavy-handed for yeah. sure, but um, I think it could change PlayStation's na- PlayStation Now's fortunes. I'll say this: like I saw some financial data on PlayStation Now a couple months ago. And it was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. They don't have a lot of subscribers, man. A lot of people, I think, forgot it even was a thing. And they spent a ton of money to buy those services. Yeah, and... Gaikai wasn't cheap. Absolutely not. So I uh, I think it's the right move. I agree. I think it's smart for them to do this and get out ahead of it before they launch their next generation machine. And uh, look, you have to be at parity with your primary mm-hmm. competitor you just have to be or you have no chance so uh, 
I don't want to give Sony too much credit for this because it's just it's kind of a no brainer thing that probably should have happened a long time ago when Game Pass first launched, but better late than never. Yeah, you kind of got to wait and see if that's going to be even be a thing. Like Game Pass is a very unproven thing when it launched. So. Yeah, but and now it's... the writing's on the wall, so yep. Sony's got to keep up. Yep. So kudos to Sony. It's moving it in the right. But to be direction. fair, Sony usually does better when they're playing keep up. You let, you let Sony start doing stuff on its own, it starts to make weird decisions. Yeah. That's how you get cell processors. You're right. Nobody wants cell processors. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Sony's better when it copies everybody else. Yeah. When it tries to do stuff on its own. Yeah. It, Sony's always better when like, oh, we can do that. Yeah. And then they do it. Yeah. And they do pretty well. And they usually end up doing it better yeah. than the original. I would say, I don't know, would you say PlayStation Move was better than the Wii? I mean, yeah. I yeah, mean, it probably a, was. It's marginally better the tech. motion tracking was probably yeah. a little better. Yeah. But not by a lot. I mean, not not so you'd really notice. Yeah. Certainly not considering how much more it cost. Yeah. But I let me play House of the Dead again, and that was fine. Yeah. I'm into that. Yep. So there you go. PlayStation Always looking now. for a replacement for light gun games. Yeah. Well, they're ma- they're remaking House of the Dead. Yeah, I saw that. But I, I'm more of a fan of House of the Dead Overkill. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll just keep my PlayStation 3 in the, in the move controls with the little gun attachments. It's weird that they're remastering that game because there have been several house of the dead games that have come out since then that were better yeah i mean overkill i mean i guess overkill is a hard sell now because it's very hard m yeah um and house of the dead one and two are more fun like arcade yeah, like tongue-in-cheek um i mean house of the dead two is cool like I, I'm, i'd be happy to have that on a modern system one way or the other I mean, they I'll, should probably I'll, just do a collection that yeah. has, like, all of them. I'll meet G over there again. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> all right. So there you go. That's PlayStation Now. Big change is coming. I'll be interested to see if it actually has an effect. It might have a bigger effect with PlayStation 5. than. It yeah, I think, I think it's more setting the board up for Because it'll also year. give them a chance to promote it again. It's like you said. Like, people kind of forgot about PlayStation mm-hmm. Now. And I know it was annoying to you to have to delete it. But more, more like PlayStation No. Right. Like, <laughs> I have to say it's kind of smart for them to just kind of shove it on people's dashboards yeah. to at least remind them like that my, it exists. My guess would be that it's going to be more integrated into the PlayStation Five OS. Is is you know it's probably going to be like Mixer where like it's just like you just can't get away from it. It's like its own tab somewhere yeah. or something. So we'll see what they do with that. Yep. And there may be big changes coming with PlayStation Five which we're going to talk about a little later in the show. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there was huge news about that in the last week, and we're going to discuss it. So, all right, let's move on. We're going to talk next about China. 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 Uh, China is really messing stuff up right now. Well, we just got the statement from Blizzard while we were talking. Well, I I already had a statement. No, they just put 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 out another one. They just put a statement out, uh, like, 20 minutes ago. Okay. Well, I'll read the first one that they put out when we're talking about this, and then we'll we'll go to the, Mm -hmm. the new one. Uh, for those of you who don't know what's going on, Activision Blizzard is owned, par- at least partially, but mostly by Tencent. Mm-hmm. Tencent is a Chinese company. Although, to be fair, Epic's owned 40% by Tencent, and then Tim Sweeney told them to fuck off. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll get to that, too. <laughs> and what happened is a professional Hearthstone player, an eSport athlete, if that's what you call him, participant, um, after he won the latest Hearthstone tournament, he had a mask on that was symbolic of the protesters in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And then he verbally basically said, I support... Free Hong Kong. Free Hong Kong. And uh, Activision Blizzard didn't like that too much. Actually, Tencent didn't like that too much. At least that's my guess, is that Mm -hmm. Tencent saw it, was like, wait a minute, we're paying for this tournament, and we're a Chinese company, and we're not okay with that. And my guess is they called Activision Blizzard was like, that kid's got to go. And Activision Blizzard banned him for 12 months. Uh, I want to get the guy's name out there. Blitz Chung. Yep, Blitz Chung was his name. Um, I mean, presumably that's not his real name. but Right, it's, yeah, like... it's not. And in fact, his real name was really hard for me to pronounce, and that's why I didn't even bother mm-hmm. including it. But, Everybody knows him as Blitz Chung. Yeah, his right? player name is Blitz Chung. Um, the excuse that Activision Blizzard gave him for why he was banned, because backlash happened immediately. Yeah, uh, instantaneously, it just it turned into a shit show for Activision Blizzard, and the the excuse that Activision Blizzard gave for why he was banned for twelve months was he broke the tournament rules, uh-huh. uh, and this was this is the provision inside the rules that Activision Blizzard pointed to as to why he was he was uh, banned, engaging in any act that, in Blizzard's sole discretion 
brings you into public disrepute, offends a portion or group of the public, or otherwise damages Blizzard, Blizzard's image, will result in removal from Grandmasters and reduction of the player's prize total to zero USD. Yeah, that is a very difficult case to make for what he said. In addition to other remedies which may be provided for under the handbook and Blizzard's website terms. Now, they have gone somewhat back on that with, okay. the, with the new statement from 20 minutes ago. The suspension is now only six months, and he's getting his prize money back. No, you, you have to unban him. Nope. Immediately. And they said in the statement that they uh, the that China had nothing to do with their decision. Oh, of course. Which is like, please. <laughs> like, guys. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but the uh, I don't know if you saw that um, okay. in one of the the I think it was one of the finalist matches of Hearthstone as well. But it was the American University team. They're playing on their campus. It was a, it was a the online, tournament was at American tournament. University. Yeah. No, the, the American University has a team. It's okay. a Hearthstone team, and they were playing. It was all remote. It was online playing, but it was streamed, and they did like a Hong, free Hong Kong thing, and Blizzard didn't punish them, so they forfeited their win. And said, "All we, all that proves is you have a double standard, and you didn't punish us for that, and you did punish him, and so that's bullshit, and we refuse to participate." Um, so Blizzard has really been raked over the coals for this, um, rightfully so. Like secondary ticket sales for BlizzCon even slowed down. I think um, it's uh, well, there's a boycott BlizzCon yeah, hashtag. This, I mean, this is kind of th- trending, and, and like people started canceling their subscriptions for World of Warcraft and stuff, and like and Blizzard like locked down. You know, basically locked down the various ways to cancel your accounts. No way. Uh, they did. They, they they suddenly said like, oh, you can't do that right now. You have to call us. Or whatever. Oh my god. Uh, there was some Twitter Twitter buzz about that. <laughs> um, th- this is basically like one of the most blatant examples of the Streisand effect I have ever yeah. seen. Like, if they had just let the kid alone, no one would be talking they, they about couldn't. this now. So the same thing is happening right now in the with the NBA. Yes. So the NBA was playing a bunch of games in China. And basically, China gives the NBA a ton of money, mm-hmm. like billions of dollars a year. And some want the gen- the general manager of the Phoenix Suns came out and said, "I support the protests in Hong Kong." And China just lost it and basically was like canceled all the games that were supposed to happen there. Some of the games were like charity events for like disabled people, like events that were going to do good. And China canceled the events. Now, here's here to me is the big difference between the NBA and Blizzard, though, is that the NBA willingly went into an agreement with China. The, the commissioner of the NBA, Donald Silver, I know his last name is Silver. I think it's Donald Silver. He signed deals with China. That was all their own decision-making under their own volition. They saddled up with China. So to me... It's like you can't lay down with a dog and expect to not get fleas. So I have very little sympathy for the NBA. I I think the NBA made its bed, and now it's got a lie in it. Blizzard is a little different, though, because Blizzard has a parent company that calls the shots. The NBA is the parent company. With Blizzard— Tencent doesn't own that much of them, though. I mean, I know they have a lot of revenue that comes out of there, but, like— like it's not a shareholder situation. Right? So I have the data on Blizzard in China. Tencent owns a lot more of Epic, and Epic's not doing that. So I know Tim Sweeney's still in charge of that. I mean, he's he's the majority shareholder still, but like Tencent owns something like forty percent of Blizz of Epic, and they own something like four percent of Blizzard. Is that true? It's a, it's very small. I think it's, it's more. I don't I don't think so. It's 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 definitely four or five percent. It's it's very small. So right now... But that doesn't stop Activision from being a dick. I mean, yeah, they are Activision. Uh, right now, the Asia-Pacific region, which, in, it, look, this isn't just China. It's China, Japan, several other Asian countries. So it's pretty big. It only makes up 12% of Blizzard's quarterly revenue right now. Mm. And yet... I mean, 12% is a lot in revenue terms. It is. It's a, it is a lot, but it's more about the prospects because Right. But what are they worried about? Like what's chi- I mean China's just going to ban them from being there? Is that the No, concern? they're worried about t- it's 10 cent. That's what they're worried about. Absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that 10 cent contacted them and was like, "Yo, bro, like that ain't cool and that's not yeah, going to no, fly with us." It's like you own 5%. Go fuck yourself. I really like, I really think 10 cent owns more than 5%. They don't. It's definitely 4 5%. I, I can look it up right now. It, it shouldn't take that long. But to me, those are two different things, though. The NBA and uh, 
And Blizzard, it's like I give a lot more sympathy to Blizzard than, than I do the NBA. Wow, that really auto-completed fast. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it auto-completed like the whole thing after I wrote how much does 10. Yeah. 15.6 no. stake in a no. company. No. And raise a stake. No, previously had 15% stake and now owns less than 4.9% of the shares as of 2017. Yeah. Four oh, so they sold some of their they stake. They sold a bunch of stuff off ah, a few years ago. So that's why I thought it was more. So they used to have almost 16%, now they only yeah, have Yeah, the five. last couple of years they've been way down. Gotcha. Okay. I don't remember why they did that, but they did that. And uh, and they invested real hard in Epic, apparently. I didn't know I didn't know until Tim, Sw- Tim Sweeney was tweeting about that, that they yeah. own that much of Epic. Even if it's not Tencent, it's China. Because... What's happening at Blizzard right now is their subscriptions and their revenues in the West are falling. Mm-hmm. The only place that they're rising is in the Asia Pacific region. And so they look at that market as an opportunity to grow or to offset the losses that they're having other places. So, yeah, I mean, and China, I mean, it runs its market with an iron fist. Like, mm-hmm. it, if it doesn't want you in the market, it just takes you out of it. And suddenly, 12 whatever percent. Of your revenue is just gone. Yeah, well, you play with fire, you get burned. I mean, they that's... actually are more similar. The NBA and Blizzard are more similar than you think at first, yeah. because it's this almost the same exact chunk of revenue that they're like. Yeah, well, it's also in like, danger of losing. It's also just like trying to organize some kind of tournament style thing on that side of the. Yeah, you know, but it's like you have to ad- accept that, like, you know, ch- the nature of China's government means that things are volatile in that regard and things that you do that you might think are the wrong thing or the right thing are going to get you in trouble over there. Now, I recognize that the, you know, Activision is under no obligation to do the right thing here because they're a money-making corporation. I mean, they can do whatever they the want. Corporations are not your friends. Like we've said that over and over again. Like, they you know, do not look to companies for moral guidance. They and I feel like this is one of those that. publishers that a lot of people did. Blizzard? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess. Yeah. People have an affinity for Blizzard. They love Blizzard. I love Blizzard. I usually good, would love Blizzard. Good but... guy Blizzard, yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it had a good reputation until now. But uh, I don't mean, yeah, I mean, they should have just let it go. Like, it would have been nothing if they just And then they go. come back and they're like, oh, it's only six months? No, you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're I mean, missing at least the they, point. I mean, at least they gave them the money back. But, like, yeah. um, six months is an eternity in In esports, it's like your career games. could be, yeah. like, over. yeah. I mean, he'll be he'll be so old then. <laughs> I was talking to Adam before the show started. I'm like, two years on the internet is like ten years oh, yeah. in real life. It's like the internet years are like you you're gone for a year and a half or two years. It might as well be a decade. Mm-hmm. It's just stupid. I mean, the thing is, like, I wish because their statement said that you know today it said that they you know China had nothing to do with this with the decision, which you know. I don't. I don't know. Does anyone believe that? I mean, come on. No. Like, because because like what I'd like to see is like, I mean they make some weird sort of long. I, I skimmed it while you were talking about Call of Duty, and uh, they make. Some <laughs> you weren't paying attention, man. No, I'm never gonna play that game. Uh, and I'm and I'm I was skimming it, and like it basically there's like a lot of justification about the the standards of their esports. Da, da, da. It's like you cannot make those the rules you cited stick to what he did and said. At all. Like, there's no yeah. way to do that. Like, it's not even, like, don't bring up politics things. Like, don't offend people. The only people that that's offending are people I don't give a shit about offending. So let's go through the, the actual rules that they're using to suspend this guy. Brings you into public disrepute. No. No. If anything, he's like a hero. I mean, someone, some people may not like what he says, but that's not the same thing as public disrepute. That's like... I mean, public disrepute, like, implies, like, whipping your dick out on stra- stream or something, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, like, pretty much. Uh, next, and this one, I mean, the way they wrote this, it basically is so open-ended they could apply it to anything. Right. Offends a portion or group of the public. I mean, they could disqualify could be anyone. any competitor for that. I mean, I could offend you by saying I don't like a specific card. Right. You could offend not, someone by how you play a card. Like yeah. Again, like they just the verbiage in this is letting them off the hook for anything. Or otherwise damages Blizzard's image. None of that. That doesn't damage. No, Blizzard, Blizzard did that. Yeah, Blizzard. Yeah, Blizzard should suspend themselves yeah, for a year. That's what I'm saying. And not pay themselves anything. Yeah, Blitzchung didn't soil no. Blizzard's name. Blizzard, Blizzard did. did. It's insane. Blizzard did incalculably be more damage to their reputation in the last three days than he did by saying that he had, that the place he comes from he would like a good thing to happen to. Yeah, it. and then. And then, like, them for them to half step whenever they realize they're wrong, that's gonna make it worse. No, it's just, I mean, BlizzCon's gonna be a mess at this rate. There's gonna be people full of Hong, free Hong Kong signs and shirts. Oh yeah, and everything. everyone's I mean, gonna have masks on. Oh, yeah. oh I can't. Gonna wait. look like a watchdog. I can't convention. wait to see it. 
and watch them try to corral it because yeah. it's going to get worse now. Like whatever motivated Blizzard to make Me this stupid decision, it's going to get yeah. worse. Meanwhile, now. watch Ubisoft make make Hong Kong the DLC for Watch Dogs Legion. Right, and it'll be like <laughs> you're a part of the resistance and yeah. you're fighting against the oppressors, and people will love it. Like so dumb. Blizzard doesn't do dumb stuff like this normally. It's yeah. so out of care. But look, they've lost some leaders here. Over the last, like, year, they've lost some guys who have been there for a long That's time. That's true. I mean, remember, the people that made Blizzard what it was are all over at uh, Bonfire now. Yep. You know, like, Blizzard is not what, what the company you remember anymore. It's a logo so, now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, which is a shame because for a long time it wasn't. Most studios have turned into a logo way before Blizzard did. Yeah. But it just recently happened. Yeah. And you're seeing now the lack of leadership and what, what happens when you don't have strong leaders at the top. You have people who will bend the knee because they just want to keep their job. So... I don't know. It's dirty. Yeah, you really wonder where the buck stops on this one. Right. Who has stepped up to say it was my call? Well, I mean, the 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 statement was signed by, what was it? I mean, J. Allen Brack, the president, like says sincerely at the end of it. Hmm. Um, I don't know. It's bad. Moving forward, we will continue to apply tournament rules to ensure our official broadcasts remain focused on the game and are not a platform for divisive sh social or political views. Got to keep it vanilla. Yeah, got to. I mean, I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, you don't want people campaigning for political things on like the NFL broadcast or anything. But like, but they do. But they do, <laughs> and nobody loses their salary for it unless they kneel. Yeah. So Colin Kaepernick did. Yeah. He lost his career because of it. Yep. That's also funny. Where it's like you spent all this time, all these people spent all this time screaming about how NBA players shouldn't talk about politics, and then in America, and then when China does a thing, like, well, what do you have to say about China? Like, okay, one or the other, dude. No, I saw that. Like, pick one. Yeah, I saw there like people were getting all over the Warriors coach because yeah. he wasn't informed on the issue and didn't want to talk about it. Yeah, and which like, hey, if more people that didn't know shit about shit said, hey, I don't know shit about that, and I, I don't think I should talk about it, we would be have a better world. There would also be no internet. That too. <laughs> It would just go away. That would be a lot of Twitter traffic gone. That's, that's, uh... It absolutely would. So I think that's two thumbs down from us for Blizzard. Yeah. Just I'd... a huge mistake, a gaffe that I never expected that company to And then to Riot, make. Riot did the same thing today. Yeah. Yeah, Riot. And Riot is owned. Riot is owned by Tencent. By Tencent. Yeah, that is probably a direct order from the top. Yeah, so think. Riot today came out and said no political stuff at any of our esports tournaments. Like, at mm -hmm. least... It got out ahead of it. Yeah, I mean, before I, it did something and stupid. And look, I don't expect anything good out of Riot. I, I, I don't expect Riot to, to, to make the, the, the moral or progressive choice. Let's, yeah. let's be honest. Like yeah, this. after the expose yeah. and all that stuff, we kind of know. And, uh, and good on Tim Sweeney for sort of sticking to the man on that one. We'll see how long that lasts. He he um, has so much money. Like, He's true. Like, like whatever. Epic doesn't care. Yeah, <laughs> everybody there is like rich. Epic's just like ah, eh, <laughs> one more group of people that hates us. Whatever. <laughs> Play and, Fortnite. <laughs> and now I remember why the rundown was changed. It's because the Blizzard topic segues into the next into one, Fortnite. which is okay. Fortnite. So we're going to talk about Fortnite now. And your your rundown's a little more detailed, so you give me a you give me like a a, a, a cut down one. So you must have edited something later. Uh, so we're going to talk about a couple things with Fortnite. Uh, one of them is that it's in a tailspin. I didn't hear. I don't know about any of this. Like, okay, so Fortnite is down fifty percent year over year. Wow. Yeah. So why? it is. That's what we're going to talk about. Wow. Some, <laughs> some of the. I mean, look, I don't play Fortnite, but some of the events that have happened this year like seemed really cool. Like bigger than ever. Yeah. Like cooler than ever. Like they had that concert where like ten million people the showed concert, up. The and, thing where the giant monsters fought the robot and yeah. stuff. I mean, that stuff was cool. It is cool. I don't even care about Fortnite, but no. I was like, you know what? That's pretty sweet. Like, like, that's I, a good like idea. I watched that event live on Twitch. Like I was like, yeah. I, I made time for that. Well, it was like, are you talking about the concert that they had? No, I'm talking about when the two giant, oh, the yeah. giant they built a giant robot and it right. fought the giant monster, and yeah. like it was like they change the map and stuff like yeah. it was great like i tuned into the concert just because it was like unprecedented like mm -hmm. i wanted to see what would happen if they had a virtual concert and it was like 10 million people imagine if you charge like a dollar like if you instead of having people go to a festival out in the middle of nowhere where mm -hmm. they have to set up tents and live off the land for three days if you just had festivals where you could just go there virtually and instead of paying like four hundred dollars, you oh. pay like five dollars. Oh, there's somewhere in somewhere in the Facebook hallways, someone is working on that. Oh yeah, I promise you. absolutely. And it would be they'd be stupid not to. Like it's a great idea. I mean, obviously people loved it. Ten million people showed up for it. Mm -hmm. So Fortnite is down fifty percent year over year. It's wow. basically in a free fall. 
And why why do you think that is? I have no idea. Do you think it's just that the most of the players are young kids who have limited attention spans and they're just always on to the next hot thing? I don't know. I, I mean, I was up north and everybody I know who isn't me has children up there. And like all the kids are talking about Fortnite. Yeah. They all they all talk about Fortnite. Like two of them, two two eight year olds told me Fortnite is the greatest video game ever made. I'm like, well, with your long experience, I can see how you'd be the authority <laughs> on that. Um, <laughs> it all, look, all my nephews and even a couple of my nieces are huge Fortnite. Like, like even even the like kids they that do the dance yeah. and like well, even the kids that don't play it know yeah. about it and like know what's happening in it they know all the weird things about my it. mom who's in her late 60s knows what Fortnite is i mean put it to you that way mm-hmm. but for whatever reason it is going through a meteoric fall right now um and then you wonder if it continues down that path if epic continues to have that that kind of bravado that it showed whenever it decided to call out the china and hong kong in mm-hmm. the hong kong protests um but sweeney doesn't care no, <laughs> he has more money than the next twenty generations of his family. Yeah, even spend. down fifty percent is still a lot of. Oh yeah, playing. I mean it's still the biggest game in the world by a landslide. Even down fifty percent year over year. Yeah. But my only guess is that you know it's a lot of young people play Fortnite, not a lot of adults, and kids tend to get bored of stuff and they move on. Yeah. Also, kids go to school. Know, go to school. They, <laughs> yeah. they they graduate and go to college. Yeah. And they go, you know, life moves pretty fast. I mean. I was just at my high school reunion, and like that was one of the things we talked about. Was like how when we were in high school, four years felt like forever, and it now did. four years feels like yesterday. Like it, like yeah. four years ago was 2015, and I'm like, oh, 2015 just happened. Man. I know that is one thing I will say. The older I get, the faster time goes, oh, and yeah. I mean it's accelerating. Like it's real. I can't also, believe it's been six years since I started working on Sifted. Yeah, it's also nuts. 20 years ago today, the beginning of filming for Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's nuts. Think yeah. about that. But you're right. Like, kid, when you're in high school or middle school, it drags. Oh yeah, three, the three years of middle school were like it seemed eternity. like an eternity. Yeah. You're right. But as you get older, I don't know. Maybe you're you place more importance on your time, and therefore it just seems like you never have enough of it. And I don't also, you just like you know, the older you get, the less, the more time you've lived, and the less those chunks of time feel like a chunk of your life. It's like that's a good point. It's like I say when I you know I was horrible. when you're 17, four years is a quarter four of years, your life. Yeah. It's a whole <laughs> lot of your life span. It is, yeah. Now it's just like, eh, whatever. I've done that like 10 times. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's true. So uh, I mean, it's, it's just the nature of it. And there's there's, there's people there's an, a philosophical argument over like if you could live to be like a thousand years old, would that conti- would that phenomenon continue to happen? Like would days pass in blurs that you didn't even notice anymore? Um, and I'm like, I don't know, but I'd like to try it. Yeah. Like. I'll, 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 I'll take a thousand years of life just to find out if yeah. if years become meaningless after like a while. A day, it feels like it's like a day or a minute yeah. or something like that. It could be. Uh, so I think that's my best guess on why Fortnite is falling like it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think adults have long since moved to Apex Legends or something else. Yeah, there's I mean, battle royale and everything. There's probably some just you know some uh, you know dias- diaspora going on there. Um, also, is like these things get more and more complex, and these these events become more and more involved. Like, you know, I can see sort of like things. Oh, it's just too much. It's too much yeah. to keep up with. Um, or you have finals or whatever. You know, it's also the summer. Um, you know, maybe a lot more people went on vacation this year. Like, who knows? Like, yeah. there's a lot of fifty percent though. That's fifty percent's a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're talking like tens of millions of people. I mean, look, man, I get tired of games after like two months. Like, if these people got tired of a game after two years, like more power to them. I'm, I'm, yeah, you lasted longer than I did. I mean, think about the staying power this game has had. Oh yeah, it's impressive. I mean, I, I, think I burn out. I can't play a game for more than a year. Yeah, and I think there's also an element of. Uh, you know, ch- parents catching on to what this is and realizing that they need to limit time or they need to limit purchasing or like sort of. I, no, I re- you're right. That has been a huge. I remember thing, like a year actually. ago, I was starting to first run into. Yeah, you know, I was running. You first, you'd run into parents and like older people that knew what Fortnite. I'm like, oh, you know what Fortnite? Oh, of course, my grandkids play. But then, like a few months later, you started to see them getting concerned about. Right. It. Yeah. Because so it's maybe, all they do. Yeah. So yeah. maybe now, especially at the end of a summer, maybe there was a lot more rules laid down this beginning of this summer. It's like you are going to do more than play Fortnite all summer. I mean, that might be it. So. I mean, it could, that could have a lot to do yeah. with it. But anyway, it's in a free fall. It's right certainly now. part of it, I would think. Yeah. Uh, then the other story about Fortnite just making the rounds right now is that Epic is being sued in Canada for making Fortnite very, very addictive. That is actually in the court filing. Hmm. <laughs> very, Your game's very, too good. Yeah. So a Canadian <laughs> law firm has filed a suit on behalf of 
two groups of parents that have sons. One's 10 and one is 15. And uh, they are saying that because Epic hired psychologists to help develop the game, that it intentionally made the game as addictive as possible and knew that it was going to hook kids and, in their, in the parents' words, mm-hmm. ruin their kids' lives. Okay. So okay. they have not said I mean, how much... My response to that is Epic would have been like, well, not just kids. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Our market's much bigger yeah, than We're that. aiming for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, uh, they're suing Epic for doing its job well. Yeah. I mean, that's... Epic is just, I mean, they achieved the goal of capitalism right yes. there. Like, they, they made a product that everybody wanted at almost any cost. Yep. Even at the cost of their lives. Yes. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> apparently. I allegedly. I mean, look, if, you think, their if you think your kid is ruining his life with this thing that he does under your own roof, maybe you should do something. about. I mean, like, you can compare it to smoking and drugs and all that shit as much as you want, but usually the problem with that is the kids run off and go somewhere else and do that. Right. They're not in their room playing on the computer that you own because you bought it for them. Right. In the house that you pay the rent or the, or the mortgage on. Like, you can go tell them to stop if you think it's a problem. Well, it's like my wife. Anytime as opposed to just suing canada <laughs> well it's like my wife anytime she she says shane i think you're playing too many video games which is kind of crazy she doesn't really say that very often anymore because obviously she's learned over the years that that's just what i do <laughs> but whenever she says that i i just say to her well okay you know i could just start going out drinking with my buddies at night and then mm-hmm. she's like oh no 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 no! <laughs> you, you can stay right here play as many games as you want yeah, that's like, what my friend's wives used to say she, she's like well at least i know where you all are yep i know you're not <laughs> out doing whatever i know where you're at i know what you're doing i mean in all honesty if we were out we'd probably be at a barcade we probably would be we'd be playing like, games anyway <laughs> it's like, i don't know we gotta go outside well where's street fighter i um, wouldn't tell her though i'd be like no i went to some sports bar or whatever yeah. <laughs> so anyway This couple in Canada is suing Epic for doing something that it should be doing, which is studying human psychology to figure out how to make games that humans will like more. Mm -hmm. They're basically insinuating that video game developers should try to make games that... Don't make it too fun. Yeah, don't make it too fun. (laughs) You gotta gotta draw the line there somewhere. If it's too much fun, then... You gotta, you gotta have the. That's what QA needs to be. It's like, ah, I had a little too much fun playing this. Yeah, maybe you might want to dial it back. Dial it back. Maybe, maybe make it a little harder to play. You, you might want to touch up the graphics on level yeah. eight. <laughs> Just make the A button intermittent. Yeah, it only works every once in a while. One out of fifty times you don't jump. But it, here's the thing: it's not just games. It's everything. Of course, every piece of entertainment has. The people who have created it have worked with psychologists and psychiatrists to make sure that it's as effective as possible. Yeah, it's just a part of production. Like everything's like that. I mean, everything. Your I mean, branding, like your your packaging, packaging for items that you sell. Soda. Everything. Coca Coca Cola intentionally uses that shade of red to condition you to associate it with you know quote unquote refreshment to the point that sci- psychological studies have shown that people constantly exposed to Coca Cola advertising get thirsty when they see that shade of red. There you go. Like that's I mean. Everyone has psychiatrists and psychologists and you should on their be marketing doing teams. It. Again, That's it's what capitalism. It is. If you want to have a successful business, you should be thinking about the psychology of your customers. You'd be a moron not to. A moron. Yeah. I think about it every day. What do people who come on Sifted think? What do the people on our YouTube channel think? What about the people who watch our stream live on Twitch? What do they think? If you're not thinking about that stuff, you're going to fail. So what do you think happens with this lawsuit? Keeping in mind that it's in Canada. In Canada it's not yeah. in the U.S. I mean, I would guess that you will probably find that, you know, they are designing the game to be that way. So if that is actually something you are liable for in China, then I would imagine that Epic will lose it. Lose that suit. I you think it'll, they'll lose it? Is it? I don't know anything about the Canadian law, really. But They um, haven't said how much they're trying to get in damages. Right. But, I mean, I think if you can prove some kind of connection with the, psych- you know, the idea they're trying to make it an addiction in the same way that... Um, uh, in the same way as cigarettes are, yeah. But the, I think that the key... They compared it... They do compare it to cigarettes, To I big know. tobacco, the, yeah. But the difference, the two differences there is, like, I'm pretty sure you can't prove a, a causal link between video games and cancer. And... Yeah. <laughs> or, or like, a physical addiction. Like, you know, nicotine is an addictive chemical. There's nothing like that in Fortnite, to my knowledge. If it, if I it, haven't played it that much, but... If it has it, <laughs> I didn't... I, it didn't... I didn't get any of it. Yeah. Although, to be fair, I never got addicted to cigarettes either. Right. So, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm immune to it. Maybe maybe Epic's nicotine doesn't work any better than Philip Morris's does on me. <laughs> um, 
the other thing is like I think you you know if I were Epic I would be probably more of the the side of like we are trying to make it a thing that you want to spend money on we are not trying to addict you to the point of ruining your life because if we ruin your life you will no longer have money to give us right like that is clearly going not not going to be Epic's goal because if you ruin someone's life they are no longer They're not a, good a customer. customer yeah so that would be my defense on that I don't know I mean I think that would work here I don't know if it'll work in Canada Canada is a Canada is in some ways crazier and in some ways saner. Like, I don't know which side of that fence that falls on. Like, you know, because, like, I, I do believe that you need to have some sort of form of regulation on things like this and not just let the corporations run wild. But at the same time, the idea of a game being too addictive is so nebulous that I don't know how you how regulate How do you quantify that. it? I don't know how you quantify it. I don't know how you regulate like, it. Like, how do you, you do. create the line where if they step over it, they're guilty. I don't and know. And if they stay behind it, they're innocent. That's why I mean. What I mean. With, with, that's why I mean. Like the cigarette thing is a more clear cut thing because it's you have addictive. you have science behind it in the sense of like this chemical, this chemical, this result, this effect, this connection to lung right. cancer, this connection to emphysema, etc. Whereas like games are like it's just a thing you do obsessively, and also if in you the, have no self control. Uh, yeah, and also <laughs> in the case of like like children be, again. You kind of run it. I don't want to go like full libertarian or anything here because I'm not. But like, that's your problem. Yeah. Like, it's like it's like if your kid's doing something that you don't think is good or it's harmful to them, stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Like you're the, the parent. Con- take the console away. And yeah, they won't be they won't be Use happy the with parental you. Parental control. But you're not there to be your kid's friend. No. Like that's you're not there what- to be their parent. Again, this is another case where parents fell asleep at the wheel and they're trying to get, mm-hmm. get money from it. It's like you messed up and now you're trying to get paid for it? The other caveat to this is in the terms of service for Fortnite, it says you cannot sue us. If right. you, it says, it <laughs> yeah, says yeah, that. Yeah, I, I heard that. That's right. Literally, it says do not play this game if you think you want to sue. You can't. Yeah. If you play it, I mean, that, you can't sue us. That's really funny. I, I really like that. But at the same time, it's it would be pretty easy in most court cases to prove that, like, that's there's, not no, there's no reasonable expectation that anyone has read the EULA. Like, right. no, everyone knows that. Like, that is... Yeah. No one does that. There's a whole episode whole of thing. South Park about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I think you could get around that one. That's a very funny thing to put in your TOS, Yeah, you though. can't sue us. Um, can't sue us. No backsies. I have to go update our TOS on Sifted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while you're at it, change the copyright from 2015, or whatever it is. What? Isn't the, end, isn't the copyright at the end of the show? No, oh, only like, for Game Face. Yeah. All our other shows have 2019. Right. But Game Face, well, we're supposed to, we're redoing the graphics anyway, so it's like pointless to go back and fix the old ones when mm-hmm. we're going to do new ones. So anyway. Heard that one before. No, yeah, like a month ago <laughs> when I got, when I launched, when we got in here, like I was going to do it right then. But it's going to happen soon, and I'm going to be at your house with a camera, so you better be ready. <laughs> yeah, you and I are going to be in the new intro for Game mm-hmm. Face. Stay tuned, folks. So anyway... And then on top of all that, all the China stuff with the Epic. I mean, look, they can wipe their tears away with $1,000 bills or mm-hmm. whatever if they want to. But still, it's been a bit of a rough week for Epic across the board. All right, let's move on because we got a lot of stuff to get to. We're going to talk about the. this is probably the biggest story. Probably should have. I buried the lead a little bit with uh, this topic. Uh, we're going to talk about the PlayStation 5. And a bunch of new information came out. Wired published an exclusive article excellent they got to talk mm-hmm. with sony and mark cerny so they got both the the higher level stuff and then they got into the weeds a little bit on the tech with mark cerny um, although note again as i've been saying like sony knows they don't need to go big on this announce these announcements they know that like we'll, we'll find it wherever they put that info we'll find it and they don't need to go big and huge and spectacle until later next year when you start having to get the the civilians involved basically I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. After the information in that Wired article, I don't have very many questions left. Not about the hardware and stuff. No, uh-uh. it's just, it's just I mean, they seeing, pretty much gave the, it all. What up. are the games? What are the games look like? You know, it's it's the it's the the eye candy is left basically. All right, let's start the going fun through stuff this left. because there's a lot like for us to talk about. Uh, first of all, most importantly, probably it is called PlayStation Five, mm. and it's a numeral. It's not a V. Uh, some people were thinking maybe it's going to be called PlayStation V for five because mm. the dev kits are shaped like a V. A weird shape. Yeah. It has also turned out that that is absolutely legit. Those dev kits are real. It the dev kits are shaped like a V and do have the crazy vents on it. Uh, that was all real. So all right. now keep in mind that doesn't mean that doesn't the mean final the system looks like right. that. 
The original Xbox dev kits looked like a giant Chrome X. They were an yes. X. Yeah, they <laughs> literally were a giant Chrome X. Uh, so Sony, usually Sony's dev kits are just like these boxy PCs, basically. Yeah. So it's a little weird that it did create a form factor for it. For the dev kits, it does make me wonder if maybe that is at least close to what it's going to look like. Um, ray tracing is built into the GPU. Mm-hmm. Lo- oh, so Cerny gave us a couple other tidbits several months ago. People took that and ran with it, and people were assuming that the ray tracing was going to be handled in software. And for those of you who don't know how that works... That would have been a very bad It would have been really bad. Um, anytime you try to run something like that in software, you're going to get a huge performance hit. Mm-hmm. And so people were kind of freaked out about it. I wasn't. Like, I, I knew Sony wasn't dumb no. enough. I knew, there was no way, there was no possible way both sy- new systems would not support hardware ray tracing. Yeah. No it is the next big thing. It is the thing, it's in the new graphics cards. If you don't put it in your con- new console, you are basically hindering the console for the next six years right out of the gate. There's no way that was going to be in there. I have also heard through the grapevine that developers are kind of in a holding pattern right now Mm -hmm. because the dev kits do not have that. The support for that, yeah. So, no, even the hardware, it doesn't work yet. Mm. Like, they don't have, like, to the metal ray tracing in the dev kits yet. So they're like, uh... I got a year. Yeah. I mean, they have time. Now, now luckily, that's more of a coat of paint thing than, like, a break the game by putting it in anything. I mean, they can still continue working on it and things like that. But, yeah, they they cannot work yet with the full hardware. Uh, The ray tracing is important because that is... Basically, that's going to be... um, That's going to be the key in the sense that, like, that's what's going to make the games look next gen. Oh, yeah. And... People who have seen next-gen games have said that it is, like, the biggest leap since the leap from 2D to 3D. I don't know. We'll see. I think the leap from first-gen 3D to next-gen 3D was bigger. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, we'll see. I mean, we haven't seen any games yet from these things. Because Battle Arena to Shinden looked like crap. Yeah. I'm sorry. Whereas uh, NFL 2K was astounding. Yeah, it's true. Um, so it, he talked a lot more, Cerny did, about the SSD. The mm-hmm. And he talked about how in games currently with typical hard drives, you have to basically duplicate items in the game world. So you just copy for quick access. For quick access. Yeah. And with an SSD, you don't have to worry about that mm-hmm. anymore. So that's going to free up a lot of read time, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. I mean, but also like um, space. Like they're not gonna, the games aren't going to be as big. Right. Yeah. Even the though. Installs will be a little more controlled. Yeah, because you don't have to duplicate a lot of assets yeah. like you had Because you're, you're talking about, like, I mean, it's, it's things, I mean, the, one of the guys I know from uh, from Naughty Dog tried to explain it to me once where, like, how, like, you basically have to, like, duplicate Joel's textures f- every, a, oh, like 15 times based on what area he's in because you need to access those textures while you're in that area and you can't send him, you can't send the, the hard drive back to where you're storing, like, level one textures because that's too long of an access time so you just have to just keep duplicating these character textures through the whole thing and if you could only do it once you'd actually be saving a bunch of space yep. like when you add it up among all the things you have to do that with and especially you're talking about you gigabytes the, and gigabytes of space yeah when you think about these high res text 4k textures yeah i mean if you look at which is need, important considering who knows how big the hard drives are going to be in this thing that is one thing they still haven't shared yeah is how big i am SSD very is curious there. about how much space they're me giving too us I, I made the mistake of buying 128 gig ssd when i built my last pc and it has become a nightmare mm-hmm. it's just like i can't back up my phone because and i have like nothing on it like i have my operating system and any yeah. programs that will that require that they be installed on the same drive as the operating system and that's it yeah, and I, am, I mean, that's pretty much what I've... I mean, I have a one terabyte SSD as my kind of C drive, and then I have two six terabytes as my, holy more, as my normal... Holy crap, how much did those cost? At the time, I think they were like... I think I'm like 200 each, 250 what? each. It, they're on sale. Wow, I mean, it was some that's sale like the best sale ever. I mean, they'd be even less now. Wow. Um, I mean, I got a, I got a one terabyte uh, flash drive for like like 30 bucks. Yeah, I mean, the, the, but SSD storage drives. Is cheap. Not, those aren't SSD. Oh. The, 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 oh. the six terabyte ones are standard 70, okay, okay. 7200 RPM. See, that's what I do. I have the SSD I installed my OS on. Any programs that have to be on that same drive, everything else is just on mechanical drives. Mm-hmm. And my SSD... I mean, I'm ready to replace the hard drive in these things if they're too small. Like My SSD, always full. Like, I can't... I can't back up my phone. I haven't mm-hmm. updated the OS on my phone in like five months. Yeah. Well, then my SSD on my MacBook died. Uh, or like, uh, what was it, about two months ago. 
Because huh. um, you can only you can only access them so many times. It was, I mean, it was a seven year old MacBook, and yeah. I didn't I didn't want to get a new one because I hate the new ones. But I had to get a new one because this, I mean, it was dead. I've never had a computer die like to the point I couldn't even get the data off it. Like I couldn't use it as a like, normal. I've had like things die. I've had like hard drives die, but I could still use them as like a like a like a storage device on, on a working computer. Wouldn't even see it as that. Like all everything was dead. So, so like, I when, regret- the, when SSDs die, they They're die. They're done. Yeah, you can't get your data back either. Yeah, I mean, normally, like things like that, if you get like 150 terabyte lifespan, you're talking about like 12 years yeah. of use. But I use that that computer all the time. So yeah, so that's a big deal. How big are these drives going to be? And that's one thing that they mm-hmm. haven't committed to. And he would not come. And he's like, I have to leave a couple things left for bite me. I haven't decided <laughs> yet. Um, also, I mean, the, the, luckily SSD prices have gone way down. So like. They could put a larger. You know, I I I'd say you at least got to give us two terabytes. That's that's gonna make it really expensive. No, it won't, because SSD prices are way down. Like, how much is a terabyte SSD drive? I right haven't now? looked in a while. I like, bet it's a couple hundred, three hundred bucks, probably. Not, no, not third of that, maybe. Really? Not not remotely. Huh. No way. I mean, you're probably starting at one terabyte, but I would if uh, you you should give us an option for two terabytes or even three. Like, well, if the games these, are smaller, maybe that helps. They ain't gonna a little be that bit. small. I mean, yeah. they wouldn't be using hundred gigabyte discs if they were that small. Yeah. I mean, it's still gonna be. A th- I mean, we also know, just in the history of how games work. Oh, you made the data smaller. That means we can go bigger. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, they just take advantage it, of it. Yeah, they're just it's gonna stay the same. They're just gonna put more in there. They're gonna un- uncompress more stuff, or they you know. Yeah. You, you you never get you never gets ground back from game dev like nope. they always like nope we, we that's what we need we I'm need, okay with that it's fine <laughs> I want them to keep pushing the envelope but I need a bigger hard drive in in exchange yep so as you said 100 gigabyte optical discs uh, there is going to be a 4K Blu-ray player mm-hmm. which no brainer but sure. still good to know uh, game installation will be mandatory which it kind of already is yeah and that's because. The write speeds are so different from the disk drive to oh, the yeah. SSD you can't drive. can't that stuff off. The- It'll never work. Um, what else? Uh, you'll be able to install portions, again, because of the SSD. You'll be able mm-hmm. to install just portions of a game. So say you get the new Call of Duty, and you're like, I don't really care about multiplayer. I just want to install the campaign. You can do that. Mm. You can just install the campaign. You can just install the multiplayer. Again, that should help with space. Yeah. So there are... Maybe a terabyte might work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it'll be close. Um, another cool thing is, you know how, like, if you want to see what's going on with a game that you like, you have to boot the game up, go into the game's environment, and see, like, okay, are any of my friends playing, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Well, with the again, with the way the SSD is going to work, you're going to be able to see what's going on in all these games right on your dashboard. Hmm. So you can you'll just see a, a leaderboard. It's like, hey, five of my friends are playing this, four of my friends are playing that, three of them are playing that. And you can decide right then. I have that. It's called a friends list. Yeah, but you have to kind of sort through it and like, mm. it, it's not one of the bigger deals. I'll give you that. Um, my, uh, the controller. Let's talk about the controller now. So they said that the controller looks almost exactly like a DualShock Four. That could change. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone expected them to revamp that tremendously. I mean, I know there were the rumors about a video screen being in it. But yeah, they didn't say anything about I mean, that. that. That controller design is basically the PlayStation's logo. Like, they're never going to change yeah, yeah. what that looks like. Yeah, as far as, like, the the general form factor. Yeah. Of it. yeah. Um, so, anyway, the, it looks like the DualShock 4, but it has a bunch of new stuff. Um, there's a microphone on the controller, so you're not going to have to have, like, a, a wireless, like, headset mic. Um, they would not confirm but you that. Will. The wi- you will. You I will. Mean, the you- wireless writer saw it and was like, oh, hey, you have a microphone. And then Mark was like, well, we don't know if that's a microphone or not. It's just a hole in the controller, right? Hmm. <laughs> but the wires writer was or like. Or it's a camera. Yeah. Who wants that? Like, well, that's. That, that is my worst angle. <laughs> you're right. That's everyone's worst angle. But I think what they're saying is that the camera is going to be built into the consoles. That's, mm-hmm. that's been the rumor of the last couple of weeks anyway. Same with the Xbox. Yep. Both of them will have it. And it makes sense with streaming and everything. You I kinda... mean, sort of, but at the same, like I mentioned that to my brother-in-law while I was up north. He's like, I keep them both in a, like he's, I keep my consoles in an entertainment center with the door closed. Uh, like, I like, how's that going to work? I'm like, well, you're not going to stream a lot. So. Yeah. I don't see him like going on Twitch and streaming yeah. like all weekend long or anything. Uh, so there's a microphone on the controller. Um, 
And they're saying that another thing that's pointing towards there being a mic on the controller is that Sony's been working on voice-driven mm. AI. It's yeah. basically working on its own version of Siri. Right. So that's what that would be. I mean, it wouldn't be like I, you'll still use a headset, I think, for multiplayer. That, that's just, my guess too. Yeah. I mean, if you want quality, for sure. Um, adaptive triggers with haptive feedback. Welcome to the Xbox One's controller. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've had that on Xbox for a long time. Uh, the guy from Wired said that uh, he was playing a Gran Turismo demo. And one, the car had one tire on the side of the road, one car, one tire on the car on the tarmac, and he felt different rumbles in each hand. Hmm. Which, and then he said that they there was also a demo from the Astrobot team, like a platformer, and basically all it was was just a bunch of different surfaces that you could walk through. And he said you could feel the difference walking in sand versus walking hmm. on a wooden plank. Well, I mean that's that's the uh, Xbox doesn't do that. Yeah, so that's. Like, HD Rumble's trying to do some of that on the Switch, but I don't think it really succeeds all the time. Yeah. It's haptic feedback. That's a pretty big deal. So mm -hmm. that's going to be in the controller. It has an improved speaker. I think I read somewhere that... Anything would be an improved yeah, speaker. Yeah, yeah, But I think I read somewhere that, there, that it's like a stereo speaker. There's like two mm. small speakers on the controller instead of just the one. That's cool. I mean, I like some of the things they've done with the I love it. I think it's great. There's been some cool stuff with that little speaker. I do kind of hope they don't. Much more so than with the Wii. Yeah, I do hope that they may be changed so there's not a glowing light in my face yeah, anymore. But yeah, I, that was a mistake whenever they put it's out the It's not a make or break, but it would be nice. Uh, and then finally, a USB Type-C connector. Yeah, sure. uh, so it charges. You can also play while it's connected. Mm -hmm. So what's your take on all this stuff, Matt? About what I thought. I mean... Not a lot of surprises in there, really. Are you disappointed that there aren't more surprises? No. I mean, all these systems need to be as bigger and better. Yeah. I just want more power. I don't care about gimmicks. I don't care about any of that bullshit. I don't need you to sell me another Connect. I just need you to make me a more powerful system with ray tracing in it. And then I need you to give me Ghost of Tsushima. And that's basically <laughs> all I'm asking for at this point. Like, I mean, it's, it's, I'm a simple man when well, it comes my, to my, my new game systems. My, I would like to know a price. Yeah. But, my hope is that by the time we get a look at all the PS5 software, we won't care about Ghost of Tsushima anymore. That it'll be yesterday's news. Well, I think Ghost of Tsushima is a PlayStation 5 launch game. Oh, you don't think it's going to come out for PS4 even? I think until... it will, but I think you can play both. Oh, yeah, for sure. But my point is, like, by then, I hope that we will have seen PlayStation 5 exclusive software. Don't care. That makes us forget about Not a last gen. Not a single chance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you will have Maybe cut, for you, you. You'll have to, and, and millions of other people, because you'll have to cut my part of my brain out to get me to not care about Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it comes out early next year. PS5 comes out at the end of the year. I don't think, I'm, I'm hoping that the game. I don't think it comes out early next year. I think it comes out next fall. Oh, so you think it's going to launch for PS4 and PS5 at the same Around time? Around the same time, yeah. Oh, that's not what I thought you were saying. Or maybe, like, it comes out August, and then there's a PS5 upgrade when you buy a PS5 a couple months later or something like that. It's going. I think it's going to be one of your, fla like, the flagship game for here's what PS4 games look like on the PS5. I mean, it totally could be. But my point is that I hope that they show us stuff that looks so much better mm -hmm. that we're not concerned here's, with games like that. Here's the thing. I don't think they will. I don't think they will be. You'll will be seeing only made for PS5 stuff for years. Really? I think because it's going to be scalable. I mean, as soon as you turn ray tracing on, that game's going to look like it's going to look like another game. Yeah, it's true. I think you're going to be just. Be, I think everything's going to be cross gen. It's just the way these things are made. You think every PS5 game you'll be able to go back and play on PS4? I think most of them. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. I never thought about that really. I don't think there's going to be a huge dividing line between the two systems in terms of library on this it would, one. I think that. Would... I think eventually you will get there. And, like, there will be a big deal made of, like, oh, this one's only PS5. Like, you cannot play this on PS4. This is true next year. You know, I think there's going to be an element of that. But right now, I think everything's going to Because the install base is so big on the PS4, and you're not going to get that install base on the PS5 and, um, you know, for a couple of years minimum, and these things cost so much, you want those PS4 sales. So I think if you can do that, if you can scale them like that, I think that's what we're going to see for most of this stuff. I think it would stunt PlayStation 5 sales but I don't know if Sony or Microsoft cares about that anymore. Right, yeah. I mean, if you listen to Pactor, this might be the last physical hardware generation. Yeah, well, he said that two generations now, but like... Um, Has he? Yeah, he said the same thing about this generation, if I remember right. Maybe it was someone else. I, I've never seen that, but maybe... I've did. definitely seen people predict this was the last hardware generation yeah. that we're in right now, or that PlayStation 4 and, PlayStation and Xbox One were going to flop, and no, you know, no, yeah. like, you know... 
If people are so averse to buying hardware, why is the Switch selling like it is? Yeah, I think it, no matter what, we can agree, though, that Microsoft and Sony aren't as concerned as they used to be about selling as many consoles. No, as I don't I don't think I think they're seeing this coming generation as more of a marathon than a sprint. Um, I think they just want people in the ecosystem. They want people in the ecosystem. They'll get there. Like, they'll get, you know, but right now, you know, it makes more sense to sort of like kind of make the transition easier. I think you're, you're seeing the shift to the phone model, you know? I mean, sometimes, yeah, Apple puts some upgrade up that makes all my games stop working. <laughs> um, but in general, if I buy a new iPhone, I can still play all yeah. the old stuff. And the stuff that comes out after that new iPhone is released, I can still play on my old iPhone. Yeah. Um, you don't you don't divide up your customer base like that, even if they are spending a lot of money for new hardware. Like, that's just the new normal. Yep. So I think that's where they're going with this. I know, I know they said those internal, like, rumor stuff that says, like, the backwards compatibility on PS5 is not really ready yet. It's not really working the way they want it to yet. So everything might not be ready to, you know, you may not be playing every single PS4 game on your PS5 at launch. But I think they'll get there. I think they'll get there in the way that Xbox One got there. And I think um, part of the business strategy is you don't have to buy this right now, but it's there if you want it to look amazing. I think the third party stuff is the problem. Yeah. Because I'm sure Sony. Certainly the third party stuff is going to be multi platform, obviously. You know, but I, I don't know if my question is are they going to be different versions? Like, will you just buy a PS4 version of Call of Duty and it will also work? I think so. On PS5, or will yeah. you buy it on your PlayStation account and then you can play it on either system? Yeah, I think it'll work. Just I think like that's a, how like that a will PC work. Game. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, it'll just scale up or scale down depending on your the hardware. I mean, that you know. makes a lot of sense to me, especially because they've worked so hard to make you attach to your digital library. It makes no sense to not let you carry it forward. Yeah, as, attached to that account. And so. again, with the changing tides of not really concerned about how many units we move at retail anymore, mm -hmm. it. It makes a lot of sense. You just want people to buy software yep. and spend money in your ecosystem, and it doesn't really matter as long as they have hardware yeah. that gets them in there. That's all that really matters. Yeah, but it's it's just like it doesn't make sense to alienate all the people that have the old hardware yep. when you could make you could sell millions of copies of Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, they'll to sell them. way more Ghost of Tsushima to PS4 oh, yeah. customers than they will PS5 customers. And no question. Sony knows it without a doubt. So. It'll even be if to even see. if you do like, I mean, even if you do a thing like I could see it be like a Nintendo style thing where it's like. Five ninety nine for the PS five upgrade on Watch Dogs Legion or something right. like that. You know, like, yeah, some you know, little patch. Some that little really bam, isn't anything. Bam, you know. <laughs> it's just a way to make five bucks. You're right though; that'll probably happen. Uh, so, what is left for us to know about PlayStation Five? Price, price, release hard, date, lineup, hard drive size, hard drive size, lineup. And that's pretty much it. And also, I mean, it's, this may be a red herring, but um, cost of the games. Yeah, are they gonna change the cost of the? You know, I don't know. Would you be okay if they bumped up the cost of each game by ten bucks? I would grumble, but I would still buy them. Would but you didn't answer the question. Would you be okay with it? Doesn't matter if I'm okay with it. It's like, what am I going to do? Stop buying video games? No, no, I know you're not. But I'm saying, like, if it happens, like, will you begrudge them for doing it? Not really. I mean, I won't I'm, at all. I'm surprised that like, and look, we do I'm get games they... for free. That yeah, but also, like, I'm su I mean, games haven't gone up in price in like fifteen years, like ever. Like, they've been 60 bucks since 2005. And, I mean, you can even go back to the N64 days right, where N64, they were that the much. The cartridge days, they were more than that yeah. if you adjust for inflation. And if you adjust for inflation, I paid $160 for Fantasy Star 4. Right, right. So, I, I mean, I know people probably don't want to hear me say this, people who are watching this show, because they're consumers like us and they're gamers like us. But I really don't have a problem with games going up to $69.99. If, look, if it can alleviate some of the problems that are happening with crunch and the low quality of life mm -hmm. if that little bit of extra revenue can get them to bring more people in to work on games so that people that are working on them don't have to work insane hours it's worth it to me although if you do and i raise... feel like we've been ripping off like the industry for like 15 years although if you do raise the price i want to see fewer microtransactions oh yeah i'd agree with that too yeah like the it needs to be less skeezy the micro I mean, stuff. it wouldn't. They wouldn't do that. I know, but I think it should. <laughs> if I, I might be permitted a Jim Sterling moment, <laughs> in which I explain what I think co companies should do, but no, they won't do. Yeah, and we do that a lot here on Game Face yeah. as well. So, so there you go. That's the scoop on PlayStation Five. But we don't do it in a top hat, right? <laughs> which is what ma makes Jim Sterling the classy one. Or with Moglins or Boglins. Boglins. Or what is, is it? Bo He's Boglins. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. He talks about it all the time. I have no idea. He's what also it got is. a star scream on the podium. So yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. I appreciate he, that. He earned some points from me for that one. So anyway, there you go. PlayStation Five. There's crazily enough, there's really not that much left to the imagination. No, I mean the real, form factor. All that's the left. Price. All that's left is really a blowout director. 
whatever what is it, state of play yeah whatever there's really that's all it's, or a e3 conference if they decide to do that next year I yeah mean, but we got form factor price hard drive actually size. there's one more thing left which is Ubisoft showing a PlayStation 5 game before anything else is shown and then refusing to admit it's a PlayStation 5 <laughs> game. That's, no, it's a PC that's game. That's the next move. That's, yeah. that's probably going to happen at the Game Awards. Probably. Movie. No, actually, you're right. That's the perfect time for it. They'll be like, here's this thing. It looks real, way better than anything could it possibly look in the current gen systems. Oh, no, it's just a thing. We did. It's, just a, yeah. it's just a dinosaur. It's just a PC. It's just, it's I, it on a PC. It. That's just a dinosaur <laughs> down the street. It's, it's nothing. It's nobody. <laughs> All right. It's time to move on. We're going to talk next about an indie game. And, I, and look, in the... In the case of full disclosure here, I want to uh, share that I am good friends with the owner of the studio that makes this next game. It's Indivisible. Lab Zero? Yeah. Peter Bartholo, do you know him? The, uh, well, I don't know him. I, I, I mean, I know they're the Skullgirls guys. Peter Bartholo started that uh, studio. He was a my journalist. Sister's, my sister's good friends with one of the artists <clears throat> on this game. He was a journalist. Or no, one of the art, she's good friends with one of the artists in Concrete Genie. Well, I knew oh, okay. it was one of those things. Well, he was a journalist just like us, a games journalist. And then long ago, he decided, like, I'm getting out of this. I'm going to start making games. And he's formed his own studio, I think, with one other person. Uh, and they made Skullgirls, as you said, an indie fighting game that actually ended up attracting a pretty big audience. And yeah. it did really well. Um, Peter is not, like, a fighting game guy. So that kind mm -hmm. of, like, surprised me. Well, he did have one of the top Marvel guys helping him on Skullgirls. Yep, that, exactly. I don't, remember, I don't remember who that was, but he did give me a demo of it at PAX once. And I remember going up and because I I knew of Skullgirls, but I hadn't played it yet, so I went up to try it. And he's like, "Oh, have you you, have you know you know fighting games?" I'm like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> I guess he'd been trying to explain to people how to do fireballs all day, oh, and I was geez. like, "Oh no!" He's like, "Oh my god, I can just relax." I'm like, "Okay." Uh, also, Rich Brown. I don't know if you ri know Rich from Game Trailers. No. He he worked with me for eight years or seven years while I was there. Uh, he was he does voice work for Skullgirls. Mm. He was like one of the characters or whatever. So I do have some, I guess I could say conflicts of interest with this game. Um, hopefully you guys trust me that I'm going to give you the real scoop on it anyway, which I will. And I think Peter would be disappointed if I didn't. Um, so anyway, it is a kind of a turn-based RPG made by the Skullgirls team. Yeah. It's like an active turn-based system. Yeah, as much as Final Fantasy is, I guess. Yeah. Um, if you have ATB turned on full blast. And it's 2D side-scrolling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 2D side-scrolling platforming action turn-based RPG. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You nailed it. Uh, based this, on Hindu mythology. Is it based on Hindu mythology? Mostly, yeah. I didn't know that. There's a, there's a lot of Hindu mythology in this. I was not aware of that. Uh, we're seeing, and just so you guys know, the, the B-roll we're showing of this is all from the first few hours. We're not going to spoil anything major. Uh, this is how the game starts. Mm -hmm. Do you find that odd? What? Like, that it just starts with a battle where you don't even know what you're doing. I mean, a lot of JRPGs start, you know, so-called so in media res, uh, so this felt pretty on, on, on point with me. Uh, my thing was, it doesn't really tell you how to play. No. So you sort of, like, figure, oh, each, each button controls a different character, but it doesn't matter because you're going to lose this fight anyway. Yeah, there's so. no way to win it. But when you first start fighting, you're like, oh, my gosh, each attack is taking off, like, two pixels of health mm -hmm. from this, whatever this thing is. And then, inevitably, you lose. And then it kicks, and then it actually kicks off the game. I don't understand yet why this has relevance to the actual game. Well, because have you got far enough to where you figured it out? No, it, 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 I mean, pretty much explains it in the first scene. How? Well, the if well, it says sixteen years later. Right after that, the the guy there yeah. in the back, that's her father. Oh, I didn't know that. When you when you uh, when he you got old for sixteen, got, years. got old fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know, but when he when he at the end when they when I mean they win the fight, but like they all get really beat up. If you see, he's got the same scar or the same injuries that her oh, father I didn't, has. Oh, I, I didn't pick up on that later on. And I'm I, the implication I think is that the girl is her mother. Oh, which that's my guess. Okay, so you play as a young girl who, when the game starts, has a father but no mother. Yeah, her mother's, mother's absence mother's, is a mystery. Yeah, her mother's dead, or so she thinks she's dead. Yep. Uh, and she and she's never been told what happened to her. No, and uh, the father's been mercilessly training her uh, to do something or other. Because yeah, see the axe. Oh yeah, ah. um, the uh, sharp eye there. Um, and and so the uh, but of course you go up and you go for training, and he's like, you must be more serious. And she's like, I'm tired of training all the time. And he's like, I'm done with this conversation. And then he leaves, and as soon as you go down the hill, your he's, village is on fire. And I mean, dead. it's very. I mean, you, you literally wake up. 
and you're late for training, and all the village people talk about how, oh, that, that Ajna, she's always late, and I mean, it's very Chrono Trigger. It's, very, it's, it's also very Zelda. Yeah, it's well, like the standard JRPG like like trope is like you Peter wake is up. a big Zelda fan. You wake up, you're late, you go to the thing, and as soon as you come back from the first thing, all your village is loose. on fire. Yeah, and your father. Ocarina of and Time, your village is on fire. And your father fire. dies, and that's that. Yep. So and then so after that, she gets uh, she decides to uh, take revenge on the leader of the bad guys that burned her, destroyed her village. Um, but before she can do that, she has to, she fights the guy who kills her father. Uh, but in the middle of the fight, uh, he gets sucked into her brain, into her mind, yeah. uh, into her inner world. And she can't get rid of him and he can't get out and they can't kill each other. So he just has to come with her. And so she just goes off on, on to go find, you know, his boss basically. And along the way collects a bunch of other weird characters that also yeah. end up in her brain and they pop out of her head to fight the, uh, um, you pop out, pop out of her brain to fight the battles, and otherwise they just sort of pop out for conversations. Um, they're all pretty funny. And uh, you can go to that other world that yeah. they all exist in. You, you can jump in and talk to them, and that's also where you upgrade her, like when you collect enough like upgrade grievances and stuff. Um, and that's the basic element. Of, you know, you're, you're running around doing the, doing these uh, these platforming sections to get that kind of puzzle solving, light puzzle solving to get through like the the world. And the combat is that you know turn-based stuff, but each face button controls a different character. And if you time it together right or plan your your attacks right, um, you can juggle and do all these kinds of combos and do crazy kind of like you can you can once you learn how the characters work together, you can pretty much stop enemies from ever attacking you. Um, it's actually a really elegant system. So I uh, hard yeah. to pick, hard to master, but like. It's real cool. <laughs> I was surprised, actually, that this is like a 2D platformer with turn-based combat, basically. Yeah. Like, the platforming in this is actually kind of challenging at times. Yeah, there's they, they don't mess around with that. Like the, like the A lot of times in games like this, it's just a means to an end. It's like you have to jump up on this block, but it's not like it's challenging. But you, as you can see, you have, like, wall jumps. You can use the axe to sink mm -hmm. it into the wall. And pull yourself up. And pull like yourself extra up. Jump. I mean, it's, it, there's a Metroid element to it as you, you upgrade things and, like, you can get through the things you couldn't get through before. Yeah, like, once you get the axe, then suddenly you can break down, like, these doors yeah. that are covered by, like, tree roots. And, and you can see the Skullgirls art style sort of here. It's, it's very similar. I am not, I will say this. I'm not a gigantic fan of the art style in this game. Like, this stuff looks okay, but, like, that opening cinematic looks like, I don't know. I... I it looked low rent to me that opening cinema. I mean, it's 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 low. And I guess it is. It's, it is low budget, but yeah. like this art. I like fine. The, I like the characters' designs a lot. Like, yeah, I mean, they're all very distinct. You know who they are already just by looking at them. The voice work is very well done. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, indigenous people doing the vo voice. Like like there's, uh, I think some the, of the voice acting is very. I don't know how to how to even put it into words. It's not vo a voice that you would expect. Like that, the old magic caster, the old woman, one of the first right. people that you meet. I would never imagine hearing that voice. Oh, in she's a game. not old. It's just an actor well, acting old. Well, no, she, the, the character's not old. Really? She's. I mean, she's a witch or whatever. But she, if you look at it, she's not. She's like. I mean, she's old for anime. She's like forty or something. 30 or 40. <laughs> it's ancient for anime. Um, and then the main girl is, uh, I believe, she's she's Malaysian, the actress. And I know I know of her because she was a voice on one of the old uh, one of the uh, Transformers Prime. No, um, her voice though, it just sound. I don't want to say it sounds. I like it. I think it's mm -hmm. great, but it's not a voice you would typically hear in video games. No, well, this is the whole cast is uh, mostly anime dub voices. Oh, okay. Like, it's not the, it's not the, and not like the ones usually, you know, it's not the Troy Baker cr like animation crew or the Vancouver dubbing group. This is more of a mainstream anime voice cast, um, which is in, all doubly interesting to me because uh, they're not doing this sort of like overly heightened, like, frankly, bad voice acting <laughs> that happens in so many anime dubs. True, they're, yeah. they're doing a much more straightforward, like naturalistic take on it. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's them. They're all very good at what they do. Um, I think like that, the, that's the, the, the sorceress you're talking, the witch you're talking about there, her voice is hilarious. Like she's, it, very, it's she's really deadpan yeah. and, and the writing's she, good. She's at, she's sort of like the Daria of the group. Yeah. That's a good like, way to put it. Yeah. And the, look, there is tons of voice acting. In oh this. yeah. It's crazy that this is an indie game that they got that much voice acting into the game. Um, and while we're showing you the combat system here, maybe we can explain a little bit more. So see that meter up on the top right? It's 
It's well, it's gone now, but it's like your super meter yeah. essentially. It fills up when you attack, and it, it you lose a little bit of it when you block. Yeah, so you have to get good at timing your blocks mm-hmm. because if you hold it in, it drains it so fast yeah. down to like zero. And you and you lose less life if you hit, hit the block at the last second. Yep. And so you that's kind of what you're doing. You're watching that meter to see when your super fills up. And then each character has icons. As Matt said, each each party member is assigned to a face button on the controller. And if you want the, the character that's assigned a triangle to attack, you just tap triangle. And a big part of managing the battles in this game is watching the cooldowns on your character and timing all four characters so that as one is refilling the other one is jumping in and that Mm -hmm. was kind of hard to do when there were only three once i finally got four characters though you're right you can kind of time if you're smart you understand how quickly uh, each character refills Uh, you can time it out so that you're just continually attacking and dealing damage and building up that super meter and then firing off your supers Uh, the other thing that we should mention is the direction you hold the analog stick when you attack with each character determines what attack they do. So if you mm-hmm. hold up, they'll do a more powerful attack, but it doesn't build as much on your meter towards your super. So you have to manage all this stuff. And all it's those, all and pretty some much- of them, the up attack also juggles. Right, yeah. And so, yeah, you're, and most of them do juggle, actually. Most yeah, of the but they attacks. launch. Yeah, they'll launch the, the up. ups launch. And then you can like juggle with one character, bring the other one in to continue doing. I think the combat system in this is great. Mm-hmm. I really, really like it. Uh, it's different. Like I can't remember playing another turn- turn-based RPG that kind of functions this way. Um, I will say this. Be- before I had my fourth character, this game will let you go places that you shouldn't go yet. So I don't know if you saw the footage. Like the first real boss that you fight is like that spider boss. Mm-hmm. And the game let me get there with just three characters in my party. I didn't have the fourth one yet, where you have to collect, like, the ginseng and the honey before you can add them to your party. Mm -hmm. I had somehow missed one of the items that I needed to collect, and it let me get to that boss with only Mm. three party members. And I fought that boss 30 times before I was like, something's wrong here. Like, I can't beat it. Like, no matter how well I played against it, I couldn't beat it. And so I just went and Googled it. And it's like, oh, you can't beat that boss unless you have the fourth character. And I was like, oh, you got to be effing kidding me. Yeah. So then I went back and like went back to my last save point and went around, found the collectible I needed to add that to my party, went down the hole, fought the boss, beat it first time. So yeah, That's right. The last thing you need to find for him is like, Instead of dropping down the hole to where the boss is, you have to jump over it and get it over there. Yep. That's right. Yep, and I had just not done it. And so I fought that boss for an hour and finally <laughs> gave up. I was like, "Who? what kind of a choke point is this? And I finally Googled it, and they're like, oh, you have to have all your party members. And I was like, ah, okay. So I went and I found the last collectible, came down, beat the boss first try. Yeah, and ginseng is key because uh, they're the only one that can heal at that point effectively and if you don't have a constant heal going on with that first boss you're not going to get through it nope like you need to you can't do enough damage to kill it before it can basically poison you to death yep because that's what happens too yeah like you're the witch she can heal you but she only heal like 100 hit points yeah and she uses up your whole meter yep and it's better at least early on it's better to save the meter for uh ajna's super because she resurrects people yeah when you when you activate it yeah and restores a bunch of health the first time you use it in a fight yep so it's there's a lot to it. Like there's, you know, and, and it feels really good when you pull off like a, a really solid combo that like oh, take, yeah. takes like half the boss's life off and like one long like 20 hit thing. It's like, it's, it, you know, there's a fighting game element to it. Or there is. To there's it, a right? rhythm to it. Yeah. Which it's, again, it's like something out of the ordinary for me for a turn-based RPG, particularly from a small development studio, mm-hmm. like the one that created this game. So how much is this? I don't, they sent it to me. Um, I think it's 30. Oh. Worth every penny. Yeah, worth every freaking penny. Like, like honestly, I would not be. I would not have been super upset if I'd paid sixty. Yeah, I like, mean, it's they that could have made this a full price game. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's really good. It's a. Uh, I said earlier in the year that um, Bloodstain was my pick for indie game of the year. This one, I haven't finished it yet, but this one's up there. Mm-hmm. This definitely has a shot to kind of supplant Bloodstain for me, and I love Bloodstain. So, I give this high high score. I mean, thirty dollars. The game's huge. Yeah. I've been playing it for a while, and it doesn't look like it's anywhere near finishing. No, it's a sprawling game. I mean, I, I was not ready for how big it was when I first started playing. It's not I'm, your I'm typical. Not that, I'm only like, I think I'm like eight or nine hours in, but it's like, oh, this is just starting. Yeah, it's just <laughs> getting started. Like, yeah. <laughs> They've been working on it for quite a while. That's the best kind of Zelda fan. It is, absolutely. 
for sure. So that's two thumbs up from Matt and I mm-hmm. for Indivisible. Both of us highly recommend this game. It's thirty bucks. Kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't. I mean, know. I because I'm friends with Peter. Like I knew what was going on with it. I mean, I, I remembered it. Like once someone like brought it up, I was like, oh that, yeah. But like I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get that. Like it was uh, a night, kind of a nice surprise. Yeah, he used to write features for me when I was the features editor at GameSpot back in hmm. like 2000, 2001. So he's been in it for a while. Uh, he just decided to jump ship and start making games. And man, it's not very many people that start a studio that create two hits like yeah. right in a row. I mean, God, I guess Super is Super Giant did, did yeah, something like that. Greg Kasavin. Yeah. yeah. But that is rare. It is rare. Game, GameSpot. Yeah. Pump, pumping out the geniuses. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Uh, but, yeah, Indivisible is great, man. Uh, it's on every platform. Yeah. You can get it on all of them. No matter what you have, you can play mm-hmm. it. And it's cheap, and you're going to get your money's worth and then some. Yeah, and like if you're looking at this and you're like, oh, that looks good, it, then you're going to like it. Yep. It's, it's it's exactly what it looks like. Yeah, there's no subterfuge going on here. No. This is what we – It's, very, it's also – it's well-written. It's very funny. It, it it reminds me of Avatar The Last Airbender to oh, some Oh, Vincent degree. is saying it hasn't been released oh, for not Switch, on Switch? So anything but Switch. It'll be there. Oh, it's, it's coming. I know it's it's in development yeah. for it. People can play The Witcher instead. I thought for sure it was day and date on Switch, though. But it does look like a, like a obvious fit for the Switch. Yep. But. Oh, it's perfect. I mean, it's also it's a turn-based RPG, which is great for handhelds mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. So, Yeah, really good. There you go. Indivisible. I go think my, I think my, my favorite like one-off line was uh, at some point you... Uh, you like basically wreck a, wreck the thing you're on, and it's like crashing. But like she still wants to take the elevator yeah. for, to to go where they need to go, and she's, she's like, "Oh, the, like everything's destroyed, so the shield's done. Does that mean we can take the elevator now?" And the other guy goes, "Yes, but you shouldn't." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, for some reason, that the delivery on it is really good. Like it's yeah. like they're, the the cast is like really on fire on this one. It wouldn't surprise it wouldn't surprise me if a bunch of the dialogue, at least the dialogue between the main party was recorded in the same room some which is not done very often it's not but, never but done. the way they're bouncing off each other's inflection is so good that, good, I, that yeah. I'm, I'm i wonder if they did a group and group just for a game recording. like this to have that much high quality voice acting yeah. like it's just unheard of like go, I, look look on imdb on imdb of the look at the cast and click on their name like the names of the main stuff like their their credits go through i mean you're talking about people that did all this stuff on one piece and bleach and some dragon wow. ball i mean these are high high profile dub voice actors so and they're all in pretty much top form so there you go buy it trust us you won't regret it uh, vincent was saying it was originally supposed to come out day and date for switch mm-hmm. and they had to delay it so oh, little, which means that they were probably the lowest priority was the yeah. switch version Little doom action there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> okay. On to our next topic. Matt, I, I've pretty much brought this topic just for you because I feel like mm. this is something that you'd be particularly passionate about and something that you might want to discuss. And that mm. is the fact that the uh, the Writers Guild Awards have decided to drop video games from mm. this year's awards because they felt like there weren't enough nominees, strong nominees. Yeah, well, I can, I can. Do you believe uh, that that that's why they dropped it? I mean, it's, I think it's a combination of that and the fact that they don't understand what a video game script is or what it needs to be or how to judge it. Um, especially because the people making those decisions are probably not playing the games; they're just looking at this like a s- snippet of the script and maybe a clip of the game. Um, the other problem is like when they talk about oh, because it's like oh, there's not enough nominees, and I was like, what? There's tons of great games. Like, well, the problem is the writers writers guild can only nominate people who are part of the writers guild. Ah. And. That's that was always the problem. Is like you'd see the Writers Guild Awards and people are like, "Oh, that one!" And it's like, "Well, yeah, because it was a, written by someone who belongs to the Writers Guild." Like if, if people are like, "Well, what?" Like like the the Hauser brothers do not belong to the Writers Guild, right. so Grand Theft Auto can never or Rock Red Dead Redemption can never be nominated because they're not part of the guild. And more and more, you know, scripts from for video games are not written by guild members. So like you're leaving out the cream of the crop in exchange for just sort of rewarding your own members for things that you don't even know how to judge properly. So I can understand why they would have decided to drop it. Like, it doesn't really... I mean, it sucks for, like, you know, one more accolade you could put on your resume if you're a Writers Guild person who, who worked on... I've been to some Writers Guild video game events and stuff. I'm, you know, I've met some cool people. Like, it's a it's a good... What game thing. won last year? Do you remember? I don't remember. That's also part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, I mean... I it is a kind of a prestigious award, though. Like, Writers I mean, Guild is something that well, people hold with high esteem. Yeah. I mean, you got to belong to it to get the big jobs, basically. But yeah. Like, 
and they do they, you know they're they're better than most of the of the unions in in the kind of the creative fields i would say but like you just the WGA is not in a place to really talk about video games right now and if you're limiting it to just guild members like the the game industry just doesn't work that way you know in the same it's you know in the same way that like Borderlands wouldn't hire Troy Baker cuz he was union you know like yeah. it's, it's like so you're sort of limiting your th- you know if you if you had an equivalent voice acting award you couldn't nominate anyone out of Borderlands 3 and like you're cutting out some good performances that way uh, so it's like if you're not going to be able to cover the whole spectrum, why bother? Because like if you're talking about like awarding screenplays, almost every screenplay professionally produced in Hollywood is a guild member written screenplay. But video games just don't work that way. So like cutting that out, I mean, it it's sort of like the the cheap way to to get out of the situation. But it's like we're not doing this right, so why should we keep pretending we're doing it right? Let's just not do it anymore. So. I mean, it is a solution. I don't know if it's the best solution. <laughs> what other solution is there, really, though? Uh, well, actually, play some games. You play some games, <laughs> but also you could you could push to. I mean, you could nominate non guild members, which would be kind of against the rules of how they operate. But you could also make a big push to try to get game writers unionized and part of the guild. But I'm pretty sure the industry wouldn't appreciate that very much because they have to pay them more. Uh, so, but the writers would. The writers would, but in the end, you're probably just going to lose business because. You're going to lose those writers' business because, like, writing is just not prioritized by most game studios. Is that the root of the problem? I think it's part of it, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's really what the problem is. I mean, who cares who writes the, the, the script? Like, just get the script done. Yeah. You know? And something, yeah, that's not true of everyone. I mean, clearly Rockstar takes the time with it. Uh, Naughty Dog is very careful about how they, what they write. Um, you know, it, it's certainly, you know, Sony Santa Monica worked very hard on the scripts to their games. Um, but... They're 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 exceptional for they they're exceptional th- for a reason. Yeah, because they're the ones who do that. I'm surprised that the people who wrote the games you mentioned aren't in the writers guild. Well, they some of them maybe, but they may or may not have done that work under guild rules. So if it's not if they're not doing it as a guild member, they just, it doesn't count either. You know, you don't always have to do it as a union production. But like, and even if they did it that way, maybe they're not credited on it because otherwise they might get in trouble with the guild. It's, it's, it's yeah. a very complicated thing. It's actually encouraging. It's actually why if you go back and look at the original Metal, Metal Gear Solid, look at the um, the cast list in the in the instruction booklet. Nobody's listed under their real name. Oh really? None of the cat, none of the voice actors are listed because under, because it was a non-union production. Yeah. So. Well, it's encouraging to hear this from you because when I read the headline, I was pissed. I was like, "Wait a minute! Like, what? You think games aren't good enough to be a part of your awards anymore?" No, that's not what it. It's not what it. But is. the they, truth is, they just kind of suck at it. I mean, the truth <laughs> is that the game developers don't care enough about the stories to get writers who are in the guild to write that's, their stories. It's a very common problem. It's really not well, the writer's guild. One, also, it's like, you know, just because you're in the guild doesn't mean you're good at it. Like, you know, they, they, Can anybody they, get in? I mean, you could, but I mean, I don't think it's that easy to get in if you're writing video games. Like, it's, it's easy to get in if you're writing screenplays. Like, there's it's a process for that. I mean, if you're going to pay your dues, they'll let you in for the most part. Um, but, like, just tons of people that make video games scripts don't belong to the Writers Guild because it doesn't get them any leverage. Like, because the Writers Guild doesn't really have a lot it of leverage. It may get them less work in the games yeah, industry. Yeah, it doesn't get, doesn't get <laughs> you a lot of leverage in the game world. You know? Like, it does in the, the TV and film world, but that's not the same thing. Yeah. So if you're, a, if you're a TV or film writer and then you do work in video games, like, that's different. But if you're a video game writer that you want to you want to move out to film and television, that would be different. But if you're a video game writer who wants to continue writing video games, joining the WGA is probably not going to be the best thing for your career because then you're just going to become more problem than you're worth unless you're Com- your company you work for really values you or really values like you know a quality union driven writing job which i would say most of them do not especially awesome. judging by how often the nominees on the writers guild's uh video game nominee list was just just made you scratch your head because you're like what really that like because they didn't have too many to choose from yeah you know? like they, they aren't allowed to pick the best of the best they're just allowed to pick the best of what their own members wrote and that's not always the cream of the crop depending on you know who hired who that year? That's great. Well, you made me feel a lot better, Matt. Yeah, it's not. It's not a. It's not a big shock, really. Okay, that's I mean, why I wanted to bring it up because I honestly was a little bit confused, and I was like, "Why would they do that? This is the upcoming like. This is mm-hmm. like the media they should be jumping on right I now." I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they came back around to it one day, but like right now, it's it's just sort of silly. just doesn't make sense. Yeah, and maybe if like the industry unionizes more and like kind of starts to recognize the contribution of writers. And that allows the WGA to kind of like incorporate that a little better. We could see that change in the future. But right now, you just and also like remember like 
in terms of like unionization and like workers' rights in terms of the game industry, writers are so far down the list of people who need that help right now. It's not even a quest. You know, that's true. Also, consider most people who write the scripts are also working programming or also working crunch time. You know, very rarely is the writer of a game only the writer. You know, they they're always almost always doing production or some other job on the game too. That's true. So. That's, and that's a, it's a hard thing to be I don't it's hard to be in the WGA when you have multiple hats to wear because unions don't like that so I don't I mean that may or may not be true of game stuff I don't know how strict they are about that kind of thing anymore but like I've heard that that's a hard thing it's hard to cross over in that regard Matt Kyle dropping science like Galileo dropped the orange so I don't know I, it, I don't know. It's, it's, I guess it sucks if you're one of like the five union people that kept getting nominated over and over again but like they weren't recognizing the best of the end of, of the medium, so I don't really see the point until the, until guild membership is a more widespread thing in video games. And even then, you're still never going to see the Red, Red Dead Redemption or yeah, right. Grand Theft Auto. Like, like Rockstar is never going to play that game. Yeah, so. and they should certainly be one of the games. That, yeah, they're yeah. definitely the one. You know, whatever you think of the game part, the writing the is definitely great. on par. Yep. Yeah, for sure. All right, it's time there to you move go. on. Some Red Dead Redemption right there. Yeah, right I had there. it queued up in there. You knew that was going to come in, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I had that. I mean, you saw the B-roll that I had queued up mm-hmm. for it. It it, it was hard to figure out which games have great writing. Like, I actually had to spend, like, a good bit of time, like, mm-hmm. figuring out what games we would show. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would say Red Dead and God of War, Spider-Man. Yep, Uncharted. Um, Uncharted. Yeah. Uh, except for Sam Drake. Um, yeah. <laughs> fuck Sam Drake. Witcher 3. Um I don't know if Witcher's still a guild thing. Uh, Witcher One was. I met the woman who wrote the English, the English script for Witcher One back in the day. She she was a uh, guild. Okay. Um, and did a really good job. I thought the enhanced edition. The, the the initial one was a little rougher, but the enhanced edition rewrote the whole script. It was a very good script. This game still looks so amazing, by the way. Yeah, it still looks great. <laughs> it's just it's just gorgeous. Think about what it'll look like with ray tracing. Yeah. Which is going to happen. Yeah, or on the PC. Yeah, I mean, assume. the PC version is going to yeah. have it. So we won't have to we even wait till Gen 9 consoles. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on. We're going to go on to our last topic of episode 185. We're all about to wrap things up for you guys so you can head off into your holiday weekend. And our last game for the week is Ghost Recon Breakpoint. We talked about it last week. I hadn't really started playing the final version at all. You had mm-hmm. played a little bit. I've played a lot of the game now. I'm assuming you have played a good bit more yeah i mean i brought my xbox up north with me when i went and uh basically played that in my room in my in my mom and sister's house uh my brother-in-law was also playing at the same time with his group and so we compared notes a fair amount um so i got like probably 30 hours in the thing what's your I, gear level 124 or something like that and i'm, I'm maxed on xp level i'm, I'm 30 level 30 yeah, the XP. cap is 30 in this which is a little which odd you hit pretty quick yeah really. you get to it pretty quickly i have i have level i maxed out level 10 to all four uh classes like did the whole th- i haven't finished the story yet but I've, I've, I've been open worlding the hell out of it while listening to podcasts basically. <laughs> it's been interesting first of all the reviews for this game have come in really late Really late and really low. And really low, yeah. But, I mean, IGN just put up its review of this yesterday. And yeah. Usually IGN's day and date with their reviews. Um, do you think that's a testament to how big the game is? I or? mean, it's, I've, partly, but I think it's also, like, maybe they're finally learning, like, we should review these things. Uh, in the wild. In the wild when they've gone live and to see how they work properly online and everything like yeah. that. Which, to be fair, I haven't had much of a problem with. Uh, this never happened. <laughs> it hasn't happened for me. No. Nothing like this has happened. No, um, I mean, I would. I think if you look at the lower third there. Yeah, I mean, I I called this trailer as lies when they ran it, and like it, it was. And it was and that's also a double entendre because I don't know how much how many problems you've had. Oh, this is this is the most broken triple A major release I can remember. Oh my god, it is astounding. I have seen crazy, and they haven't crap. patched it yet. There's been no updates. Like this thing barely works. It's infuriating. You, so there was one <laughs> where you do tell we your, begin, you tell where your do we begin with this game? You tell me your biggest thing, and I'll tell you my biggest thing. Well, I mean, thing. I could just – there's a million of them. So the biggest problem to me is that a lot of the missions take a really long time to complete because there's mm-hmm. like, here's a wave of enemies. You kill them, and then there's a cutscene, and now here goes another wave, and then there's another cutscene. Now here's another wave. The problem is, is that the bugs, when, they, when the game crashes – it, you don't know where you're going to end up. Yeah. Like, even if you die normally and the game doesn't crash, when you respawn, you could be, like, five miles away. 
Like, there was one mission I had. It was pretty early on. It's like when you have to go and destroy the drone factory and you have to pick mm-hmm. up the woman, the scientist who's there, like, and she won't leave. You're like, let's go. And she's like, I won't leave. We need to destroy these drones before we leave. That mission, I got to the point where I had wiped out the whole map. And all I had to do was go and meet her. I went and met her in her office. And they, after you meet her and she's like, no, we need to still destroy the drones. We can't just run away. Then you get another rush of enemies. I died. Hmm. I respawn. I, honestly, I think it was like 3.2 kilometers away because it tells you how far away the, the thing is. So when they respond you, like sometimes it will just respond you in the worst place possible, like on the other side of like a cliff range. Yeah, it likes to put me on the other side of a mountain. That you can't climb up and you have to go all mm-hmm. the way around to get back. And then also all the enemies that I had wiped out had all, all respawned. It, oh, my God, Matt, I quit. I couldn't do it. I, there was another mission where I had wiped out everybody, and I climbed up on top of this thing because there was, like, a little electricity, like, logo on top. I didn't, at that point in the game, I didn't even know what it was. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go up mm-hmm. there. It's some kind of pickup I haven't seen yet. I go up there. My character gets stuck yeah. in the geometry next to the thing I was trying to pick up. There's one enemy left on the whole map. And he slowly, I watch the map, <laughs> just trudges over to where I am and just stands next to me and just shoots me in Sink. the head. Uh, well, I haven't run into that. I haven't run into a lot of that because um, that's I've just fallen through the world well, and just swam in infinity. Haven't haven't had that. I, I, I haven't, haven't had a crash. Really? No. I'm playing um, on PS4 Pro. By the way, I'm on Xbox. I should have said that. So I'm on Xbox. I haven't had a crash. Uh, I mean, yeah, they respawn all the guys if you die. I mean, that's and that's, they respawn just, you way away from where you were. I find that varies. Like a couple, a couple places. Oh, they respawn me one time right next to her. Like a couple. One po- time, I was like, "Oh, dude, you're here." I'm like, "Oh my god, thank god!" And then the next time, I'm two miles away. I've never seen that. Like I've, every time I die in a place, I respawn in the same place. But sometimes it's like in a really convenient, like overlook place, and sometimes it's on the other side of a mountain. Like, yeah, there's no. And you can't get. There's no direct line back to. There's where you no need pad. To go. Well, I guess I just fast travel to a camp and summon my helicopter and go over. I mean, I, I bought a helicopter with rockets on. It was one of the first things I got when I had enough like money. Whatever, like skell grievances or whatever Skel, they are. Whatever they are. And I'm like, yeah, I, I need some apocalypse now action on this shit. And here we go. Um... My my problems have not been like of that nature. My problems have been just very strange, broken problems. Like the the big the worst thing I saw was I did a, it was one of the side quests and you have to go help uh, like the brother in law or something of of the guy who who runs Erewhon, runs the, the the hideout place, and you go help them and then you do, you're on this big like like you get in the turret of a car of a car and you are in this big like chase and you got blow up guys chasing you in jeeps. It's like every freaking you know, every Ubisoft mission ever with a vehicle in it. <laughs> and you get to the place you're getting and you go and, like, see the guy's wife and talk to her and stuff. And, of course, you're you're, you're rampaging through, like, you know, two miles of territory That's blowing guys game. up. The best and, thing like, in this game is the, just rush and kill. And, like, and you're just blowing stuff up. They, so, like, they, everybody's they, seeing you're not hitting everybody, but you're still speeding through and it's fine. So I get there and we get in the cutscene where he goes into the thing and you start talking to the wife, and they start talking about like what's going on, and how oh you better get out because da, da, da. and then suddenly the cutscene ends, and it cuts back to outside the the cabin, and I die because yeah. guys <laughs> who had been alerted to us during the drive followed us to the cabin, and while my character model was just standing outside the cabin while the cutscene played, they killed me. Wow. I was and I had to do the whole <laughs> thing again. The whole mission had right. to do it. You again. also have to watch every cinematic. Yeah, there's no way to skip them. It's over very weird. Over and over and over. And if you again. stop, you can, it's an option to stop them, but it just you have to do it again. It doesn't yeah. complete it. It just cancels it. Yep. And I've seen like you know I've seen like getting you know I've, I've had things where suddenly my gun stops working. Oh like, yeah. Or you um, spawn and you have no gun. I've killed people with no gun. Yeah. It's just my hands showing in. Yeah. There's, in the there's screen. a definite like lag in terms of loading everything in yeah i have i've done this thing where sometimes i'll i'll be running and then i'll stop and then when i move again i've left versions of my guns floating in midair oh, they're wow. still on my character but there's a duplicate just floating <laughs> in midair where i was standing um it's just a mess it like, really like is the, a mess. the cut scenes i mean they fixed the depth of field problem but like have you seen this thing where like so, tons of the cutscenes were like pushed in twice as far as they should be, and like yeah. guys' heads are cut off. Like you're just staring at somebody's torso the whole time. Yeah. It's very weird. The game is. Like, it should not. It have feels been like it feels like it's six months from release. Yeah. Like it's it's real rough. The yeah. other thing too is that 
the game is not what you're seeing right now. This was the no, not most at all. false advertising. This game, if you try to play the game this way, you'll never beat it. The way you beat this game is you just rush in and just shoot enemies in the face. Pretty much. Because they're so slow to react and aim, you just run up to them and just shoot them. Like yeah. it's the- I mean, that's how I do like patrols. Like you say, like, mark them all, and I just go plink, 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 plink in the head, and you're done. Like Yeah. It- there is never a reason to use anything other than a single shot assault rifle in this game, unless you need distance, in which case you use a single shot sniper rifle. There is, n- there is no reason for this game to exist. That's my thing. Well, here's the thing, though. There's no reason the for The reason it. for it to exist is to make Ubisoft a ton of money. Right. Because I will tell you this. I haven't seen this many people on my friends list playing the same game probably since God of War came out. Wow. Like, I've gotten, like, 9, 10 people playing it on my Xbox list. i got 9, 10 people playing it on my PS4 list. People play. People bought it. I'll people say this, absolutely Matt. bought it. It is a shame that you skipped The Division 2 and played this. The Division mm. 2 is so much better than this game. So much better. It's like night and day. In fact, don't buy this game, buy The Division 2. If you can find it on discount, all the better. But even at full price, The Division 2 is a vastly superior game. Uh, the, the That's a double can... shame because the content of this is so much more interesting to me. Do you think Division. it is? Like, I hate I'll, it. It's like I... everything's like an investigation. Like, everything's about taking, like, photos with a little camera and choosing which intel you want. Like... That is not what I thought this game was. I mean, at the, all. the setting here is more interesting. The the premise is more interesting. The style of gameplay is more interesting. Like I'm not interested. I'm if it really was that way, though, it's just a gu- run and gun. Well, that's yeah, what I'm playing the whole that's game. That's all I want. I mean, I okay. knew I knew what it was going to be. I knew it was going to be Wildlands too. But like, I like this. I, I like the setting and everything better than Wildlands. It's not a better game than Wildlands because it doesn't fucking work. Right. Um, my problem with well, it Wildlands is, didn't my, really work at first either. True. I mean, my problem with it isn't that it's like uninspired or it's a bad like idea or something. My problem is it doesn't work properly. Yeah. Like if broken. it worked, I mean, I play it thirty hours and like I don't enjoy like the basic shooting of it. But it's like I just see. I don't. I don't enjoy. Hardly anything in this. I was just dragging my butt through this game. No, I, I like it. I just I just wish it wasn't. I wish it was done because like, yeah. it's not done. And there's so many elements of it that are clearly like the survival stuff was clearly more integrated originally. Like you can see well, all the ration stuff, uh-huh. having to pip, bivouac stuff. I, None guaran- of that stuff matters, I guarantee though. you. I guarantee you at some point, like what camo you had on the character mattered, um, and or that, and that you'd have to like change. Uh, like clothing, depending on the bi- they mentioned the biome stuff too often right. for not. I mean, you, yeah. I guarantee there was like a probably like a Breath of the Wild thing where you had to wear like lighter clothing or or warmer clothing depending on where you were in the world. Yeah, like stuff like that clearly had to have been. I mean, you can you can. I mean, maybe this comes later, and I'm not far enough in the story because I've been playing for a long time. It's still not here, but like. You can break down the, the the armor and equipment into like, but I don't know what to use that for because there's, there's no crafting. Where of, is the crafting? Of, I don't know. Like, Where it's is not it? There. There's all this stuff that you collect, like all these plants and stuff. It's like, what do you do with it? Well, you can make like um, uh, syringes. Yeah, you make syringes, and, yeah. or you make like you know, make stuff at the, at the bivouac. But I have never had to use any of the ration no. stuff to be competitive at all. No, it's it's huh. complete. But I, 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 it's all or nothing. Like either you die or you don't. It's yeah. Not- I mean, I, I promise you that at some point, like all this stuff was probably more integrated, and it just got slowly and slowly scra- scraped out as like either they didn't have time to balance it, or they like or the focus groups just told them it wasn't fun. Um, the other thing, of course, is I think this game got rushed out. This is because- absurd. Watching this now after playing this game, th- these trailers. They are absurd. Mm-hmm. This was a big con job with this game. Man. Yeah, it I is said that. Nothing like this, though. I know. I said that when I when I saw these. They're, they're, I mean, that's they're not going to change that formula. I mean, these animations are in the game, right? But like, but you if, don't, as far you don't as need like, to do any, you don't need to do any. Why, of why don't you just shoot him in the head? Right, you like, just run up to him and just stab him or shoot him in the face. Like, like you've got a silent. If you got a suppressor on the gun, like no one's going to know what happened. Like. Or if they do know what happened, you just sit there and those run at you and you headshot them as they roll. I mean, I've killed 20 dudes at With once. a pistol. Also, that doesn't look like that. No. Nope. <laughs> um, but, like, you know, so, so I mean, I'm not – it's not like I don't enjoy it, but I wish it was finished. I, I do I, not enjoy it. I think they um, – I think this definitely got moved up, like, half a year or something because they needed – Something a Q, else needed wasn't going to no, make it. No, they needed a Q4 game because Assassin's Creed wasn't going to make it this year. Right. So I think they needed something to take its place, and we ended up with – an unfinished Ghost Recon game. Yeah, like, I don't feel like the gunplay feels good in this game. Like, any of it. I, I've not I wielded thi- a single gun where I was like, damn, it feels good to shoot that gun. I have one gun that I, that does. It's the... I can't remember the name because I'm not a gun person, but I, it's, the, it's like an SC... It's an assault rifle called the SC-173 or something like that. I, I set it to one shot, and it is basically my death one dealing shot item. Kill. It is so good. And I just found, I just found a gold version 
uh, that just rips shit up. It's, well, it's like if you take a hostage in this game and just wield a pistol, you oh, can, you're dead. Like, you're, you're not. Like, no, you can drop enemies no? with one headshot. Oh, uh, well, yeah, you can drop one headshot, but I, I've gotten torn up when I tried to grab a guy. Oh, really? It, yeah, oh, no, I, I've ran a whole, through a whole level with a guy held hostage. Oh, no, they before. die like that when I've tried to do that before. Because I would do that to like, because sometimes they have intel and you have to like grab right. them and do that. And yeah, I got caught by people him. and I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna, and then this guy falls, falls over dead. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, work. that's the other thing about this game is like you get locked into stuff. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna heal because I'm. He- and next thing you know, some dude comes running around the corner, and it's like takes forever mm-hmm. to get out of the animate. You just yeah. die. You're dead. Well, these. I mean, that's, I guess it's supposed to be like so, like you don't go t- run around trying to heal at random. But like the worst thing for me is when like I want to get up, like from a prone position. Yeah. And these guys just take all day. I'm like, Every, are your, are your knees that bad? So You're pretty. I mean, slow. my character looks about to be about 26. Yeah. Like I don't think your knees should be that bad yet, lady. <laughs> Get up. Oh, so th- oh, that's another thing. So I'm playing as a, as a female character. The game calls me male all the time. Like, co- everyone says, it says, a man like you. Uh, that same mission that I got killed in the cutscene, they're like, oh, yeah, we, we broke out. He helped us get here. Like, no acknowledgement th- th- of the gender change in the dialogue of the game. Fucking bizarre. Um... Like that's basic. I, it was like, did you add that real late or something? Because because <laughs> you could play a, a woman in Wildlands. Like it's yeah. not like it was a new feature. Like it's not like you wouldn't know that was coming. Um, there was another game that was like that, where like the, near the end of the game, like someone just like your your female character is addressed as a he for the rest of the game because they ran out of like they. <laughs> oh, it was a uh, Amalur, Kingdoms of Amalur, uh, Reckoning. Um, like the last third of the game, they call you a he, whether you're a boy or a girl. Your character. Um, I, I don't understand how things like that happen. Um, and there's even things like, so there's like the behemoth guarded things. You know, the, the, where you're, the, you know, the, the behemoths are like two, level 250 uh, drone tank things. And they're, they're guarding usually these towers that have like the really good blueprints really? and skill point yeah. upgrades and stuff. But if you pick the predator class, your, your class item is a spray that makes you invisible to drones for 30 seconds. Which is more than in. enough time to run in, grab the things, and run yeah. out. I'm just like, what was that? Like, yeah. there's, there's no. The whole game just feels haphazard to me. It is. It absolutely is. There's just, there's tons of systems. Half of them don't. And really There's never do any reason to do this. To carry irrelevant. a no. carry a co-op buddy. Well, why would you like, want? No. It takes an hour to put somebody down. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, you know what's faster than this? <sighs> Killing everyone and then just right. reviving them because that's exactly. you're going to kill people in half the time it takes you to pick one guy up. I think this game's a mess. I would not recommend it. It is absolutely this. a mess. I would not recommend this game to anybody. I would also not recommend it. I mean, I'm enjoying it because I didn't play The Division 2, yeah. I think. Um, and because, like, this. And that may be hurting my my enjoyment of it a little bit, the fact that I've already spent, mm-hmm. I had just spent a ton of time on The Division 2. And I'm enjoying it in the sense that, like, um, in spite of itself, pretty much. I'm enjoying it in the sense that, like, it's a big, dumb, open world game with that doesn't require a lot of attention to be paid to it. And I'm, I can watch videos and listen to podcasts and. Just sort of get random, you know, grind stuff, grind out stuff in this game, and that's it. You know, it's, it's John Bern- Bernthal plays a fine version of pretty much himself. As <laughs> he I, does. As yeah, I what do you think about the story? Uh, I mean, it's full of like the usual like yeah. Tom Clancy twists and turns, but like it, it, the idea that anyone would care about any of his characters is kind of ridiculous. I to mean, me. it's all really the bulk of the story really is just a flashback of your history yeah. with him before he went rogue or whatever. Yeah, and I mean, there's some there's and some, what led up to him. There's some cons- there's some fun little twists about like what's really going on and why this all happened and all. I mean. Not if first, everybody's not doing what you think they're doing at first, and so this yeah. standard Tom Clancy stuff, really. Yeah, because at first he looks like just like the worst. Yeah, and, and then, then you over find time out he, yeah. you start to understand that there's why he does what he does and what yeah. he's doing and why it's happening. But then like you still kind of gotta you, st- you still don't agree with him, but yeah. like you get why he's doing it, and like you got yeah. a couple traitors and that you never pull a bullet out of your skin in this game. I've never seen that. No, happen. I never saw that either. Um, <laughs> I mean, the microtransactions are extensive, but I haven't really felt the need for any of them. No. Um, it's all cosmetic stuff. I mean, I've stuff got so like, much free. Like, if you go to, like, the Ubisoft Club, there's just yeah, tons, there's tons of tons free of, crap they give you. Like, you know, the microtransactions aren't really a problem. Although, at first, they were. There were basically pay-to-win mechanics in the game. Oh, right? yeah. There are definitely. You can buy actual blueprints for guns. You can buy. That are more powerful than any. They were more powerful. They took them out. Like, they finally they mm-hmm. took those blueprints out, the ones that were kind of giving people advantages. So, you gotta remember. I mean, they do normalize stuff in the multi. Have you played the multiplayer at all? No. Don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Don't only bother. reason I would is because there's a couple of like like uh, clothing items I want for that you can only get by doing Ghost War missions. Yeah. But, like, like I like a lot of the. If you look at like the like the um, like the objective screen, 
Like it looks like a cool like a, yeah. all that stuff looks really cool. It does. But when you do it, it's not. It's not very cool. Yeah, it's not very. It's, it's not very fun. No. That's the problem with this game. It's not fun. No. I, well, that's the thing. Is like I've had a lot more fun running around. The most fun I've had in this game is when I'd set, you know, a new class and I just run around. I pin the class, you know, objectives on on the screen and I just run around doing all the stupid things they wanted me to do to upgrade to the next level. You know, kill eighty guys. Like you know, shoot shoot two guys in the head from over 250 yards away, 250 meters away, that kind of thing. That was a lot of fun. Like just running around, taking out patrols in clever ways because I had to do these stupid human tricks that the classes want me to do to advance the class. Which, by the way, doesn't even, like, doesn't even give you anything, really. Yeah. It's just, it just gives you a couple of, like, it gives you a boost. Like around level seven on each class gives you a, a boost in, like, ability of some kind. And then you just get, like, emblems and patches until level 10. You get a blueprint for a gun. All except one of which are just not very good. Yeah. Uh, only the sniper rifle from the sharpshooter is actually any good, and which is fitting because sharpshooter is the hardest class to master. Um, because, damn, getting getting a kill shot from over 400 meters away, finding someone 400 meters away <laughs> was the hardest part of that. I'm like, Wait, I can't find him. Like, I, yeah. for, when I see somebody, they're already 100 meters away, and I'm just like, yeah. so I, I had to I had to like find a guy at an installation and then climb, walk away, climb a cliff. <laughs> Get up on the cliff and look down. I'm like, okay, it's 403 meters away. Bam, done. That's hilarious. But it took me like 10 minutes to climb the damn yeah. mountain. And this game has the typical, like, you're all, like, the looting is just insane. And oh, yeah. Most of it's trash. And if you do find something that's not trash, it's like one level higher than the well, thing also, you had it before. Well, also, it does that's use, a typical it does use the Destiny upgrade system where, like, it drops stuff based on your current gear level. Right. So you you basically just have to equip ev equip every more advanced thing you get because otherwise you're never going to get better gear. Yeah. So you have to just it doesn't matter whether you like it, doesn't matter whether it's better abilities or whatever, just keep equipping it as soon as as long as there's a green number on it, the next thing that drops will be better. The UI is garbage. It's so sluggish. How is there no faster way to break I down don't, weapons? I don't like know, as soon as I hit 300 uh, we like items in my thing, I'm like, "Oh, now I got to spend 10 minutes holding s triangle." For or, like or 20 why. seconds. Well, and then you have to press A again to get through the... Uh, yes, I know it gave me improved gun parts. Like, just let me let me batch break down. Everything about the UI sucks. It's like... You Assassin's can't, Creed Odyssey got, gets how to do that yeah, properly. It's like you can't even really tell what the tabs are because they're not uniform. So, like, one's really long. One's just yeah. an icon. One's a word. And yeah. it's like you're flipping through it and it delays. And then you end up... It, it, the, and like I said, I also... The whole game just... I also, I also turned off that, you know, I was using kind of the Assassin's Creed Odyssey style. Like, it doesn't tell you exactly where to go. It says it's like, well, east of here and south of here is the farm. And I turned, I eventually turned that off. I because, bet you did. Because <laughs> this game and I clearly do not agree on what a farm is. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I thought the big open pasture with the barn and the silo was the farm. And the cows. It turns out the farm is the open field two, <laughs> two miles north. I'm like, okay. I don't know where you – okay, clearly we're just not going to see eye to eye. So you're just going to have to tell me where you want me to go. Yeah. I feel like we we prepared people for this, though. Our impressions of the beta were not going Yeah, I mean, it wasn't – yeah. I mean, I'm – We set expectations. I'm kind of shocked that it's getting the correct – in my opinion, the correct review score. It is, yeah. They're, like, they're on the money. Yeah, this game's about a 6.5. Yeah, like, that's, that's it. That's about right. Yeah. Like, I'm a little stunned that like it didn't get that Ubisoft bump. Maybe people are finally tired of this formula. I also wouldn't be surprised if in a year from now it's an entirely different game. Absolutely, that's worth playing. The fa the <laughs> fact that there has been no patch blows my mind. I know. The fact that there was no I was expecting because I was you know I was playing it early like with the you know the 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 early access thing. I was expecting a day one patch that was going to be oh, like yeah. four gigs. Nothing. I was like no nothing absolutely yeah. nothing nothing. Oh, oh, the other, oh, faction missions. So every day they turn over a new set of faction missions, which like upgrades your faction thing. And it says you like loot that way. First off, I hate the faction missions because they're they're like clearly like procedurally generated bullshit yeah. that like doesn't really work all the time. But and I know this is a function of me playing late late at night. But they turn over at two a.m. I don't always remember what time it is when I'm playing this game. Yeah, and yeah. twice I have done oh, this incredibly no. involved, like elite penetration oh, no. of a giant of a facility, and I get into the room where the thing I'm supposed to get in, and two o'clock happens. It turns over and, and turns over, and the the objective marker just vanishes, oh, my and God. the and the mission's gone. Uh. I'm like, you can't even let me just like finish the mission I have active. Like, you can't give me that. I know you can give me that. <laughs> Destiny does that. Destiny lets me finish a daily mission if I'm on it. Uh. What the hell? You be. Mark Simpson's got it right. AAA game devs have all turned into bean counters rather than artists. 
Uh, I mean, publishers maybe. I mean, I, they're games. It's bean counting. And there's so little, like that's all these games yeah. are. It's like here's well, there's another like weird bean. things where like okay, so like this game's like gun porn, right? Like part of his gun, you know, put the gunsmith in this series is because it's gun porn, right? None of the guns match up to what they are. Also, like, the gunsmith like is like awkward again. The well, UI. Without, is that's not crap. my point. That's, <laughs> that's not my point at all, though. My point is that if you're gonna like put all these guns in here and these real guns and model them so carefully, why isn't the performance and the the usage in the game of them reflecting what they are. Like, if you look at the, there's a 40, I saw, it was one, I can't remember which gun it was, but it was a 45 caliber gun. If you look at the close up in Gunsmith, it says imprinted on the gun, 45 caliber. And in the game, it uses 338 ammo. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Like, it's ridiculous. It is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's like, it, it's like how, I know you had gun experts on this game somewhere, right? Oh, yeah, like 10 of them. Like, it, like that's the whole point. I mean, like, you have a mode that lets me look so close at these guns that I can tell that you screwed it up. Yeah. Like, why are you? Why is that happening? <laughs> They're sabotaging themselves. You did it to yourself. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, this game needs massive patching, massive upgrades. Wait um, a year, buy it for twenty bucks. Like it'll probably be better in March, which I think is probably when it was meant to come out. And then it'll be too late. Because th- look at, I mean, think about March it. is looking right. awesome. But think about it. They made this game in like. 19 months. I know. It, you can tell. It definitely can tell. Yeah. Definitely can tell. So anyway, there you go. That's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I don't think it was their fault. I, I think Ubisoft pushed them to get this thing ready for this t- this I'm quarter. Sure. And, and that's that. And that's that. That's, that's the best way to put it. And that's that. When they when Ubi says leap, they say it's, how it's, high. It's still kind of fun with some friends, but it is it is broken yeah. right now. I highly recommend the Division Two over this, if you, especially if you can find Division Two on. I a recommend discount. just waiting a week and playing something else. Yeah, Outer Worlds is almost here. That's true. Like, just just yeah. I mean, the rest of the year is pretty good. Like if you really need to shoot something, Call of Duty's right around the corner. Yeah, it's coming too. So there you go. Go three con breakpoint, or just get Wildlands for like nine bucks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's been all fixed, and it all works. Yeah, Wildlands works to. great now. There's nothing better about this game. And than you get Wildlands. your four companions, your, your companions, right? They're patching into this one, but like, I miss that. I miss the the banter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So there you go. It's time for our trailer of the week. As you guys know, this is your time to get your questions into chat. Also, when we come back from this trailer of the week, we're going to be giving away a free game. So get your trivia hats on. Uh, Get your questions into the chat while we run the trailer of the week. Go at Sifted Games so we can pluck them out from all the other comments. It makes it much more easy so we aren't doing this odd, weird, like fumbling around thing while we try to answer your questions. The trailer of the week this week is for Marvel's Avengers. Um, they just revealed Miss Marvel, which is what this mm-hmm. trailer is for. And as it turns out, well, she's like... She's the main character. She's the main character. Yeah. Do you find that crazy? Not at all. That they didn't reveal the main character until after they had shown all the other stuff? Well, it just kind of goes along with their whole thing. I mean, you want to, like, push the main guys, I guess, the Avengers and stuff. I mean, we saw her in the early yeah, trailers. Yeah, she was there. She's the yeah. narrator in those early trailers. Yeah. But she is their most popular character created this century so far. Is that true? She's huge. I didn't yeah. know that. And I don't just mean since she's right. bigger. <laughs> nice pun. Yeah. Um, but no, she's a big deal. Um, she's going to get her own Marvel uh, Disney Plus series coming coming up. She's probably going to be in Mar- uh, Captain Marvel 2. Um, so focusing on her makes a lot of sense, especially if you're trying to pull in the younger audience because the younger audience loves her, like right along with Spider-Gwen and Miles Morales and all, the, all that new generation of, of superheroes. Um, and she looks like she plays way better than anyone else we've seen. So, like, she looks fun yeah, to play I'd as. Agree. So I'm, I'm into it. All right. So with that, let's roll it. What is your name? Kamala Khan. I was just some weird kid from Jersey who didn't fit in. I kind of stole something off of AIM's server. Huh, what? Why? Why? AIM calls people like me inhuman. He claims we're sick, violent. He says our disease will kill us in the end. Well, I don't believe it. What if the Avengers were set up? The so-called cure, it's just not lining up. There's something wrong and I can feel it. Don't you? The kid is inhuman. We did this and she needs your help. I, I can't, I can't. You 
Can't what? You're ditching me? Hey, don't take it personally, kid. No, this is what he does. <laughs> this was a mistake. So you're both just gonna walk away? The Avengers were set up. Cap was murdered. You think I don't know that? I've replayed that day in my head a thousand times. Guess what? No one cares. The world needed someone to blame, and he gave them their scapegoat. So, unless you have some kind of astounding proof, I suggest you both get off my land. What is that? Proof. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't annoy Banner. That's, that's not. <laughs> you don't. wouldn't want to make him angry. That's for sure. You just keep it quiet. Uh, I was saying to Matt while we were watching the trailer that it's shocking that they made her the main character because she's probably the hardest one to model and animate. And yeah. She also because like she, there's no real precedent for how she looks in live action. Yeah. Because right? I mean I know that's not super photo real, but they're trying to do a realistic yeah, look yeah. there. And there's no like. No one's done that with her really yet, so like they're kind of treading, you know, you know, breaking new ground with that character there, which is cool to see. Also, I think she's a really good entry point of view character for this because, you know, in the comic she's a, she's an Avengers fangirl, and it seems like she is in the in the game too. So like being able to see these characters through her eyes is kind of like she's a good way. If you got to do the kid thing, if you got to do the I'm, you know, like they did with like uh, Magma and X Men Legends, or like, you know, you usually have the I'm a new member of the whatever, and that's how you kind of learn the ropes. Like, she's a great pick because she loves all that stuff already. Yeah. So she's us, basically. She's, 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 yeah, she's, if we were there, we would be like her. Could be like, oh, you're Iron Man and you're Hulk. And yeah, you're yeah. And I know everything about you, Hulk, but I'm still dumb enough to suck a straw down <laughs> while I'm driving with you, even though you're getting really mad. And that's probably a bad thing to happen, especially when you're driving. Yep. Uh, okay, we're going to do the uh, game giveaway first before we get to oh, Q&A. Also, I don't know if you noticed there, but they did redo uh, Thor. Oh, yeah. Thor looks, there's, there's, Thor looks more like Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, now. yeah. Like I was saying, like make him more like the people from the movies. Yeah, at the very least, they changed his hair, so it looks yeah, more like... Yeah, it's like, like the... It's, it's pulled back or whatever. Yeah, so... Yeah. That's enough. They, they, uh, just, yeah. just it makes a difference. Keep though. doing that. Keep, yeah. I know you said they weren't going to do it, but you're clearly going to do it, so just keep doing it. Is it is the right decision. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, we're going to give away the game first. And just to preface this, it's an Xbox One game. So if you don't have an Xbox, don't participate. Don't just take the code from somebody who could use it. And the second thing is, it's coming from Sifted User OTT Apps. He got this game for free, and he wanted me to give it away on Game Face. Whoever gets the game, make sure that you go on Sifted and at OTT Apps and thank him for this game. The third thing is, it's the entire telltale walking dead series so you get mm. all the episodes so again if you hate the walking dead you don't like telltale's games or you don't have an xbox one do not participate in this so we're so gonna many rules yeah but they're all very simple <laughs> so we're just gonna give you one trivia question and whoever gets it into the chat the fastest gets it that's it we're not gonna complicate it and i will say this the question is pretty easy so if you know the walking dead it's basically going to be who can type out the answer. What if I just fear The Walking Dead? Well, nobody cares about that. So. No. Is that show even on still? <laughs> it is, yeah. It is? I actually think it might yeah. be better than The Walking Dead. I'm holding out hope on that. Yeah, There's high praise. The new, the new season of The Walking Dead launches on Sunday, I think. So anyway, here we go. Here is the question. Get your fingers on the keyboard at the ready. It's an easy question, so get ready to type. What is the name of Negan's baseball bat. Someone just typed Lee. <laughs> that was there before you even read the comment. That's great. <laughs> Who's going to get it? There it is. Sneaky, solid snake. <laughs> Lucille, that's right. You did spell it wrong, but that's close enough. <laughs> Okay, so Shaniki Schnallid Snake. I can't even say it right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, make sure that you uh, friend us here on Twitch. Uh, and then when we're done with the show, I'll accept your friend request, and then we can direct message each other, and I'll send you the code when I get home. So 
There you go. Congratulations. Again, that's from OTT Apps. Thank you very much for making that available and helping out a fellow sifter. Also, thanks to everybody who has been pledging or has been subscribing with Twitch Prime. I, I've been seeing it out of the corner of my eye, like all show, just like dozens and dozens of people subscribing. Thank you so much. In fact, if you're watching or if you're listening to the show on iTunes or on Google Play, that's a way that you can help us completely free and give us a free $2.50. All you got to do is connect your Twitch and your Amazon Prime accounts and just subscribe to our channel on Twitch and you can give us free money. Anyway, let's get on with some Q&A. Let's see what we got here. We don't have a ton of questions that doesn't look. Oh, actually, there is a lot. Uh, Eve Demon, what game do you think should be considered for game of the year that won't be considered by major outlets? And why do you think it won't be considered? For me, it's Shadowbringers because it's behind a uh, it's behind a 250 play time. I don't know what that means. It means it's the Final Fantasy 14 expansion. And you have to play 250 hours to oh, get to it. Gotcha. Um, I mean, that's probably the biggest one. Uh, I'm sure there will be people on individual staffs that have played it and will advocate for it, but everyone else who didn't bother to play it will just be like, eh, it's an MMO, fuck it. Yeah. Um, I can definitely see that. See the the, ad, the single or two double advocates for that expansion in like the meetings at the end of the year just being sort of like ignored by the editors-in-chief that would never even touch it. Yeah. The competition isn't that stiff this year. Not really, no. There is but, no real stand But there is a giant... Yeah, there's a giant wall in front of most people when it comes to oh, experiencing yeah. Shadowbringers. Plus, uh, it's just an MMO. That's a wall on yeah. its own. Do so, you have a pick? I mean, no, I think that's my pick, frankly. I mean, I haven't played it yet because I'm still trying to get to it. But, like, I mean, I think that's the obvious choice. Otherwise, I, I don't see. I, don't, I can't really think of much that would be overlooked. Luigi's Mansion. You haven't even played that yet. I played it at E3. You played five minutes of it. Like, I played, like, a half hour of it. Okay. Now play three more hours. Well, I will. What if it gets terrible? It might be terrible. There, I mean, we don't know yet. But he's, he's just saying, what game do you think? Oh, he said should be, which means I should have played it already. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm. I mean, Shadowbring is an easy pick because, like, it's highly praised by those who played it, but, like, almost no one in games press has the time to get to it. Or know? most people in general yeah. have the time to get to it. Um, Man, I don't know. Bloodstained, I guess, is the only kind of underrated game, I think. Maybe. I mean, I can't see that being I forgotten. would never give it Game of the Year, but... No, I mean, I, I could put it on, like, a short list, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it might be Indie Game of the Year, but not just Goatee. That's a know. tough question. This, I don't know. This year? Like, it, not, I mean, it's in the running, probably. There's not a lot of AAA stuff that would take up, like, maybe, like, a top five. For yeah. Bloodstain might get in there. Oh, Control, maybe? Yeah, Control problem. I don't know. Control might be overlooked, or Control might be, like, the black sheep that everyone's like, oh, this is really good, but it should have been, should have been more popular. But I think that's... That's kind of what he's asking, though, isn't it? I think like what like, what game is really not going to be that popular is kind of a sleeper for game. No, of he's the saying year. like who won't even cons- like that won't be in the running. Like people won't nominate it because yeah, I think I think Control it. honestly, I don't know, I it th- got good review scores, but nobody cares. Yeah, but I think the people that work at game outlets are aware of it and liked it. Like the problem is that they just didn't do out retail. I just think that they it may just be forgotten by the time game of the year i don't think i, I think that around. made an impact on anyone who played it and i think most people in the press played it i think the problem is that it just did not penetrate the the mainstream consciousness at all for whatever reason that would be a very interesting like marketing study to sort of see how and why the control marketing just never made a, d- a dent on it. i mean it didn't make a dent on me either oh, like, yeah, I, did, I, I didn't react to it until i played it it's gone like dust in the wind uh, Justin Horman, uh, we're about a year out from the next gen. What are your picks for games from this gen or even last gen that you thought went underappreciated, not necessarily underrated, and probably deserved a little bit more love? Hmm. Control. Um, there control it is. There. I mean, that's the banner. I think uh, some I played example? recently on backwards compatibility was uh, uh, Divinity. What was it Original Sin Two? No, that's gotten plenty of. It was. Uh, they got a lot of love. Uh, Divinity 2 Ego Draconis. What about Greedfall? You really like that. Yeah, I'm not And that's going to be forgotten. I'm not done with it yet. We'll okay. See. Um, but they sent me a code, actually. But Divinity 2 Ego Draconis is a last gen. It was by Larian. It was it was predates Divinity Original Sin. It was It's an action RPG where you can transform into a dragon. Uh, open world action RPG that almost nobody played. But, like, it was... It was clunky and janky, but it was fun, and it was shockingly funny. Like, it was very well written for a weird Eastern European fly-by-night B-list RPG. So that would be my pay. And for some reason, it's still like 40 bucks on Xbox One. They probably haven't made their money back yet. Might, That's might my be. guess. Might be. 
Uh, Emperor Dread, thank you for subscri subscribing via Twitch Prime. Again, I'm, I'm sorry that I missed a bunch of these. I wish I could call you guys all out by name, but they're gone. Like, the chat just kind of cuts off. Snub Barracuda, thank you. Next time, guys, wait till the end of the show to subscribe. I know some of you guys couldn't stay till the end, and maybe that's why you did it when you did. But if you can, always wait till the end of the show, because I really, really want to uh, recognize you guys for doing it. Um, Vincent. Um... If this is how bad Breakpoint is, are you concerned for Watch Dogs Legion, the presumed game that was supposed to be there? What about the infinitely delayed Skull and Bones? Uh, I'm not worried about Watch Dogs Legion because that game has been in development for a very long time. Um, and they aren't putting that thing out till it's done, I don't think. Skull and Bones? Um, I think who that knows? may be vaporware. Might not exist anymore. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Although Yubi does have a habit of like keeping stuff around. Yeah. My concern is like, does, like I need I need to be have it reconfirmed that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is still happening. Yeah. Because remember, we're supposed to get a beta of that this, right. this fall. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder that too. I mean, they had such a big media rush there because yeah. they were like playing it live and like mm -hmm. like every week they put out like another hour. Of the I mean, game. I don't think it's gonna get canceled or anything, but I wonder if it's just being held back for next gen. It looks like it could benefit from probably would from next gen. Uh, Toast nine one six X Shane, I noticed that you have still been playing Borderlands three. Have you changed your mind on the game? I did continue playing Borderlands three. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> But after I said on the show I wasn't going to play it anymore, I kept playing it. And no, I, I didn't end up – all the criticisms I gave it or that I shared on the show, I still have with the game. And, in fact, what finally made me quit was what had made me quit the time before. I got to a choke point where I'm like, I'm going to have to keep trying this until I get lucky, and that's mm -hmm. the only way I'm going to beat it, and I never went back. So – no, my thoughts on Borderlands 3 still stand. I mean, I'm surprised that you noticed that I kept playing it, though. I, uh, I thought I was doing that on the deal. So, someone's <laughs> always paying attention, Mr. Mulder. <laughs> someone's always watching. Uh, thanks for everybody firing off the Shane emojis in the chat. That's great. I love that. Uh, Chevelle Man, 1979, thank you for Twitch Prime. 21 months, almost two years straight, brother. That's freaking awesome. The stand user, Evan, is finally watching the live show because mm. we did it at a later time. He's in Japan. Uh, the stand user asks, Wildlands and Breakpoint look almost exactly the same to me. What major elements does Ubisoft have to improve or change in order to make the third entry an 8, 9, or 10? Uh, well, they could finish it this time before they release it. That would be the main yeah, thing. Yeah, it's really buggy. Like, that's a deal breaker to me because some of these missions take a while, man. You have to be methodical and, like, you have to use your mm -hmm. drone and mark everybody and then track them all down also, and like, kill them. And then you die, and it all it's like nothing ever happened. Yeah. Well, and also, like, I, I think just like presentationally, they need to step it up a bit. Like, the I fact agree. that, that no, all the side quests is a generic dialogue. Like, you go up and ask people stuff, and they just like, it's like, I can help you with this. Like, thanks. And like, there's never, there's nothing specific. No one reacts to you. Like, people always run from you and like, you get the same dialogue, the same like five lines of dialogue from every NPC, whether they're part of the subquest or not. Like, there's just no. The character There's models no are also shit. Yeah, like, they look, they're just they look lifeless so and like, bleh. They honestly, they look, they look like Andromeda. It reminds me of, of Mass Effect Andromeda when it first launched, and everybody's eyes were like weird, glassy, dead things. And yep. stuff. it's really, it's really below what Ubisoft standards are. It's, it's astoundingly sloppy. Uh, Stan User asked another good question, but we already answered one. Uh, Burko, do you think Breakpoint will actually be solid point by this time next year? Maybe. Yeah, I, mean, I think in a year's time, it'll be a good game. It's just like the first Wildlands was. Like, it was kind of crappy when it first came out, and they kept patching it and got yeah. it to a good place. And It'll get there. I think it'll get there, hopefully by the time the Terminator DLC comes out. Uh, Matt, did you play Dragon Quest XI, and did you like it? I did, and I did. I played it on PS4, and I thought it was very, very good. Blitches 9. What exactly is wrong with Sam Drake? He is dragged in from out of nowhere. He is a completely charisma-free character, and he's basically the Poochie of Uncharted, uh, in the sense if you've ever seen the uh, the Simpsons episode where they force Poochie into the Itchy and Scratchy show, and he should just, he's just he should be the center of everything. When he's not on screen, everyone should be asking, where's Poochie? Like, and then they had to kill him off because everybody hated him. Um, so yeah, to me, Sam Drake is Poochie. I would rather have seen the last Uncharted game focus on the characters I care about and I'm interested in and the relationships that they've built between those characters over the course of three games as opposed to dragging in some idiot loser we've never seen before to like 
pull some scam on Drake that we know Drake should see through in five seconds, but he can't because he's his brother. It's like, <laughs> screw that. Like, what a stupid idea. It was. I think it was just because Neil Druckmann wanted to work with Troy Baker again. It's possible. I think, I think that's all that was. Uh, Playland MX. Are you going to BlizzCon or the Game Awards this year, Shane and Matt? No and no. I'm thinking no. I mean, Jeff usually invites me to the Game Awards, but I just feel like I, you get a better view of things from the stream. I stopped going three years ago. Like, I went to the first couple. Yeah, I went to a couple. I mean, I met some sifters at a couple of them. Like, yeah. It was, it was, I didn't, it's not like I had a bad time, but I always, I've always felt like I see things better and easier. From, I mean, also, if I, it's, you're just sitting in a theater watching trailers. Like, I might as well do that at home where yeah. I'm comfortable and I got I mean, I go, snacks. I go to stuff for that for, like, the after party, honestly. Right. And, like, the first couple years I went to the after party and it was just really lame. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. Yeah. Well, I, didn't, I, didn't I mean, that's why I go. Like, I go to talk to my old friends from the industry and mm-hmm. catch up with them. And it was, like, so loud. And the area that we were put into was, like, really small. And, yeah. I'm not we're old. Lie. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, I, mean, wanted, I mean, it's also true that, like, you, you go to a lot of those events now, and there's just a sea of 20 and 30-something people you don't know because we're, we're yeah, from the I previous mean, generation. But so that's the thing. Like, the after party, like, the main part of the party are those folks. They're the 20s to 30s who are just fans or whatever. And then, like, our crew is in the VIP area. But there's so many of us that it's like they're just – it's mm-hmm. like sardines. And, like, I got ended up getting, like, pushed over to a corner and, like – I saw the people I wanted to talk to all the way on the other, and I was like, I can't even get over. And I just left. Like I was like, this isn't even hmm. fun. Like, and I, then I started sending like text messages. I'm like, hey, what? Where's people going after this? And they're all like, we're tired. So <laughs> I haven't gone back after that. Yeah, it uh, sounds right. Sneaky, solid snake. I'll never learn how to say that. How do I add you? Just as a do friend? it like Sean Connery. Sneaky, <laughs> solid <laughs> snake. <laughs> That's good. Um, you just greetings, Highlander. Yeah, you, I don't. I, it should be pretty self-explanatory how to add us. Just send us a DM or whatever. I'll, I'll make sure I get it to you. Um, Mark Simpson, UK. Still subscribe from day one. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Will you be raising the subs for traditional uh, sub- direct subscribers? Currently $4 a month. No. Nope. I think $4 is a sweet spot um, as far as like what we're providing right now. If we get to a place where we're cranking out more content, and I feel like... We could ask more than we will, but right now I don't. I don't think that that's the case. Um, uh, Playland MX El Camino is out tonight. Are you ready, Matt and Shane? Well, I'm probably not gonna watch it tonight, but I'll get to it. I don't even know what that is. That's the sequel movie to Breaking Bad. Oh, on Netflix or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that was out tonight. That's exciting. Uh, Toppy Oaks, thank you for the cheers, man. That's awesome. Um, I think that's it. Okay. That's it for Game Face 185. We managed to get all that stuff in just under the gun. Timing worked out perfectly. <laughs> uh, before we go, I do want to issue a very, very special thank you. For those of you guys who follow our Patreon, you probably noticed that it dropped rather significantly over the last couple weeks. Like, it's at its lowest ever. So any help you guys can give us, that would be great. I'm not going to beg you guys for money or anything. Uh, But if you guys have looked at our Patreon, you've seen it's dropped a lot. And that's because we have had a patron all along who was amazing. Uh, You guys have probably seen it. He's always been first on uh, the the crawl that goes along the bottom, (laughs) Johnny Hurricane. He he was pledging so much money to us for so long, um, and he just dropped his pledge, and that's not why I'm mentioning it. I want to thank him personally on the show for everything he did. I'm starting to choke up a little bit. (laughs) I really am. Like, I really appreciate what he did. Um, He he floated the boat for a lot of people for a long time. Like, he picked up the slack for a lot of people who maybe couldn't afford to contribute that wanted to or just whatever. He contributed so much money to Sifted over the last however long our Patreon has been around. And uh, I can't even really put into words how much I appreciate what he did. And uh, I just wanted to thank him personally in front of everybody uh, and just let him know how much I appreciate it. Because without him, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. So thank you, Johnny Hurricane. And I know that's not your real name, and I'm not going <laughs> to give up your real name to everybody. But thank you, man. I, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So thanks, and good luck with whatever you're doing going forward. You have been amazing. So that's it. That's Game Face 185. 
I don't know if we'll be back Tuesday. Like, I actually left a few games out of this show that I had been mm-hmm. playing because it was just, like, too big already. Um, stay tuned. Follow us on Twitter, and we'll let you know. Like, it won't be next Friday. Uh, it'll be before next Friday. I don't know if we'll be able to get a show together Tuesday. We'll do our very best to do that. Matt and I will get to play in and try to get another show ready for you guys by Tuesday. But just follow us on Twitter, or if you go to the site, uh, you can follow the official Game Face thread in the forums there, and we'll keep you up to date. So with that... Everybody, have an amazing and safe long weekend. We'll see you next week. Game Face is up and out.